John chapter 5, verse 39. John chapter 5, verse 39. Verse 39, 39, John 5, 39, the usual beginning place. Yeah. We give praise, glory, and honor to the Most High Yah by way of our Master and Savior and King, Yahushua HaMashiach. And begin in the fifth chapter of John in the 39th verse where it says, Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. And you will not come to me that you might have life. I receive not honor from men, but I know you. That you have not the love of Elohim in you. You know, uh, let's go look at Matthew chapter 6. You know, that's what we sit back looking at. We search the scriptures for the son so we can come to him that we might have life. It's a lot of people talk a lot of things and boy, they ain't going to make it where they want to go. We'll look at, we'll start at verse 14 because it was in my mind. Because cause it'll be able for me to start off with, with what I said. There was a reason why the master put verse 15 in my head for a reason. Huh? Matthew 6 and 14. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your father in the Shamahim will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. So now we turn around and we look at this. Uh, we can actually show an example out of the scriptures of a man having somebody trespass against him and he forgave him. And then when he trespassed, his transgressions were forgiven. You got an idea who I'm talking about? Yeah, well, there we go. Let's go ahead and look at it over here in First Samuel about verse 16, I want to say. Then I'm going to read to y'all what I was just telling y'all about that these people around here doing what these Jewish people doing. First Samuel chapter 16 and about verse 14. Brother called me about this the other day. Y'all should already know this here from past experience. 1 Samuel 16 and about verse 14. You still holding Matthew chapter 6. And it says, we'll make it 13. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the spirit of Yahuwah came upon David from that day forth. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. But the spirit of Yahuwah departed from Saul and the evil spirit from Yahuwah troubled him. And Saul's servant said unto him, Behold, now an evil spirit from Elohim troubled thee. Let our Lord now command thy servants which are before thee to seek out a man who is a cunning player on a harp. And it shall come to pass when the evil spirit from Elohim is upon thee, he shall play with his hand, and thou shalt be well. Saul said unto his servants, Provide me now a man that can play well and bring him to me. Then answered one of the servants and said, Behold, I've seen a son of Jesse the Bethlehemite that is cunning and playing. So if he's cunning and playing, what is it? Skilled. He's skilled. A mighty valiant man a man of war, prudent in matters, and a comely person, and Yahuwah is with him. You know what I'm talking about? Now I want y'all to sit back and think about something. He say, come get a man who play, who's skillful on a what? On a harp, right? Why would that be important that he got to be skillful in playing a harp to get this evil spirit up off this man? I was talking to a brother about this. He was looking for stuff that had pertaining to demon possession in the word. There's only one place in here where you, it's only two places where you see somebody has an evil spirit come upon them. Obviously, we just looked at one. You know what the other one is? Imagine. I'm talking about outside of the Gospels. You know what the other one is? The other one is in 1 Kings chapter 22 when that lying spirit went in the mouth of all the Ahab's prophets because that can't be nothing but an unclean spirit. What's clean by the lie? Absolutely nothing. But I'm going to show y'all something why he said, go get me somebody skillful on the heart. Go get you Ezekiel chapter 33 and about verse 30. You hold 1 Samuel 16 and Matthew chapter 6. Everybody on the phone all right? I know I couldn't talk to y'all much. I hope everybody all right, though. They ain't going to say nothing to me. They're probably hungry. I know this here too, man. I told y'all. Right. I told y'all this the other day too, man. I know y'all can be able to brush your teeth without swallowing the water. If I see one of you niggas tomorrow, on tomorrow, and your mouth stinks, I will be the first one to tell you. If I catch wind, if my nostrils, if, if one hair follicle in my nose catch winds of a, uh, of a, a repugnant odor, you will be alarmed on the spot. I might say it loudly that you be shamed in front of all. You know what I'm talking about? Some of you niggas probably walk around with stank mouth anyway, so it don't make no difference. That's just regular operating procedure. 
didn't have to. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I ain't messing with y'all. Y'all went no soap. You might have went no toupee too. Coconut oil. Hey, I don't care what you use. Long as you get the bacteria out your mouth. Long as you don't come around and then be like this here, like Eddie want to lean in close and talk to me too. I'm talking about and extend his word. How you doing? It's been good to see you. It ain't good to see you though. I'm talking about a whole bunch of Oh he want to all of a sudden Now he's Spanish and he want to roll his R's You know what I'm talking about You know what I'm talking about Are oh, those ruffles You know I can see all you is just mad Y'all know what I'm talking about Some of y'all got co-worker mouth be stank They always want to talk to you How many of y'all in here got a co-worker mouth stank Cause I know that lady we went to got that room For order that uh, the pay for that I don't know what it was It was not pleasant <laughs> and she leaned in close too. That's how I felt, Kingston. Maybe she was constipated. You know? Oh, hey, might have been. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I'm being honest with you. We, I, we used to say that, man. Some sometimes people might be stank because you ain't had a gut bowel movements. That stuff got they got to come out from somewhere. Oh, <laughs> well, why did you sound like a 75 year old black woman? <laughs> <laughs> Y'all ain't know that though, man. You don't have no regular bowel movement, boy. That stuff got to come out from somewhere. It's either gonna, <laughs> it's either gonna come out your pores or it's gonna come out your mouth. Yeah. I'm telling you, boy, we had homeboy man. I'm glad I wasn't in the car. I'm glad I wasn't in the car. Cause boy, they say they were riding, and he say he belched, and my homeboy say which one of you niggas farted, and that nigga say boy, it was the garlic crabs. He acknowledged that he burped. There's no way that anybody should confuse your mouth with flashes. You know what I'm saying? It sounds funny, but this is actually happening. Because I know this man, boy. When we was in school, you know, them senior books they give you, you know what I'm saying? Them senior memory books, you know what I'm talking about? Man, I leaned my, over that nigga's shoulder while he was looking at one. I'm telling you, it smelled like when somebody take a dump, boy, don't flush the toilet and shut the door. <laughs> and then you the one to come in there about 45 minutes to an hour later. That face you looking, you look like you're kind of notorious for that. You know what I'm saying? Taking dumps and not flushing and shut the door. I know somebody who who, who do it, Lil Muff? Oh, uh, nigga, you. Who? No, I'm talking about nigga. I don't leave the poo behind. <laughs> leave the older. The now, older might stay behind. The wide open. No, no, no. I ain't say the door wide open. I say the door is shut. Oh, with the load in the pot. Oh, wow. And then you walk in the door and open the door and it just, boom. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> That's a whole different type of phone. It's one thing. Oh, man, this nigga took a dump. He ain't sprayed. It's a whole nother thing, the load is down. You know, Leah leaves the load behind, but it don't stink. If it sits in that water, it's it, it nasty. Yeah. That made me think about something else, but I'm going to keep that to myself. Karen, moving right along. Ezekiel 33 and 30. No, it's something I seen the other day. It was, it was quite disturbing. He said, also, though, son of man, the children of thy people are still talking against thee by the walls and in the doors of the houses. And speak one to another, every one to his brother, saying, Come, I pray you, and hear what is the word that come forth from Yahuwah. And, thee, and they come unto thee as the people come, and they sit before thee as my people, and they hear thy words, but they will not do them. For with their mouth they show much love, but their heart go after their covenant. Now you can sit back and look at it, and we're going to look at this in Isaiah 58. Matter of fact, let's go and look at Isaiah 58 right now. See, right now, you got a lot of brothers and sisters fasting. We're still holding 1 Samuel 16 and Ezekiel 33 and Matthew chapter 6. You got a whole lot of people fasting. And get your Zechariah 7 while we at it. Just for you to acknowledge like this type of stuff. I just want y'all to catch a little understanding on something. You got a lot of people fasting, but what they really fasting for? You know what I'm saying? What are they really doing it for? He say, you with your mouth, you got a lot of people right now, I see dude, they'll complain about, oh man, I've been like this here. Man, with my, you, you got a lot of, you, your mouth talking a lot of good stuff, but your heart going after everything it desires. Every lust you got, everything you want. He say, your heart really ain't with it. He say, your mouth, you talk a good one. You know what I'm talking about? Look at about verse 3 of Isaiah 58. Look what he telling. He say, wherefore have we fasted, say they? And see thou not, that's how a lot of our people right now, we fascinated, you don't see it. He say, wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou take no knowledge? Behold, in all the day of your fast, you find pleasure and exact all your labels. You know what some dude gonna say, oh, this young Kapoor, and I ain't even like this here from what I was looking at, I ain't even confident with the word Kapoor. 
we would probably roll with the word kafar. I don't trust them no, white folks. It's, it's, it's top marine. You know what I'm saying? Because them white folks nasty now. Anything they do, throw it in the garbage. Because I'm going to show you what they say about this making atonement towards other people. I'm going to let you hear it for yourself. You probably ain't going to like what you're going to hear. He said, Behold, you fast for strife and debate and to smite with the fist of wickedness. You shall not fast as you do this day to make your voice to be heard on high. Don't you know we can look back at David when that baby, he told him he was going to kill that baby. He was fasting the whole time that he might be heard. You know what I'm saying? Even when you look at a Mashiach praying and fasting for 40 days, he was doing it that he might be heard on high. That's the whole purpose of afflicting yourself, that you might be heard. What else would you be doing it for? You're just doing it just to do it, to go through the motion. Don't you know everything you do for this man, you're supposed to do it out of a pure heart fervently. Fervently. You know what I'm talking about? You got people, they don't look forward to this day. Because all they sit back thinking about, man, I can't eat nothing, I can't drink nothing. Man, I'm going to be hungry. Nigga run around all week long doing this, that, that, and the other, don't even eat and drink. Some of them around here on drug claiming they in the words, snoring mud cocaine, smoking mud crack. No, they ain't thinking about no food then. Cocaine. <laughs> oh, wow. No cocaine. No. No. He laughing. It ain't funny. He just repeat everything. We better be careful with that. He be, he be around here telling they thinking we giving the boy cocaine. Oh, that's what I'm saying. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! <laughs> he said he don't know you like that. He said, is it such a fast that I have chosen? A day for a man to afflict his soul. Listen to what he said. This is a day for a man to afflict his soul. It is to bow down his head as a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him would I call this a fast and acceptable day to Yahuwah? I didn't want y'all to keep that in mind. He said, this is a day I chosen for a man to afflict his soul. Come on back over here to Ezekiel 33. It's a lot of stuff we're looking at. I hope you can remember it all. Look what he tell you about in verse 32. Ezekiel 33 and 32. Y'all keep Isaiah 58 in mind. I might come back to it to reread it for you. Because he said, this is a fast I've chosen for a man to afflict his soul. Ain't that what he said? Okay. He said, lo, thou art unto them as a very lovely song of one that have a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument. For they hear thy words, but they do them not. And when this come to pass, lo, it will come. They shall know that a prophet have been among them. Why do you think that's important? That he says Ezekiel is like one that has a very lovely voice and one that plays well on an instrument. Anybody? What, what y'all think? Why, why you think we would come look at that? Well, let's come look at. Let me look at Zechariah chapter seven while you stew on that. Cause I'm getting a lot of blank faces. Different ways to prophesy. Mm -hmm. well. You know what? Basically, telling you is. Basically, the root of, my, uh, root of the matter is, he's sitting here telling you, yeah, man, that word sound real good to you. It's the same way y'all hear a song, you jump to it. That sound nice. You get up and go do right what you were finna go do anyway. That's how a lot of people look at this word. It sound real good to them. It's nice like the same thing with Saul. He told Saul, go do this, go do that. It sound real good, but I'm gonna go get up and go do right what I want to do. Because he said, your heart go after they covenant. You were covering them people's sheets. And you said we ain't gonna kill the we we gonna kill the best of it. We gonna keep that. I told you kill it all. I told you kill everybody, kill every sheep, kill every ox. Don't bring nothing back, slaughter it all. That sounded real good to you. Yeah, I heard that, y'all. Uh huh. He seen them sheep. His heart went after what he wanted. Then he tried to blame and say he was scared of the people. You know what I'm talking about? That's what some of y'all do. You go do what you want to do. Then you try to blame it on your family members or your friends or your woman. You don't say, no, buddy, that's what you want to do. Your heart went right after what it was you wanted to do. You know what I'm talking about? He said, it sound real good to you. He said, but you ain't going to do it. He said, with your mouth, you show much love. You know what I'm talking about? Man, you know how many Hebrews fall right in that? They try to blame Christians for saying how much they love God. And then people say that, then they do the same thing. Well, I love you. Like they say, I love y'all, boy. Most high in Christ. That's their thing, ain't it? And the other one is this here. I ain't going to do it because my chest might hurt. Quam Yashrallah. You know what I'm saying? 
Do say and do a lot of different things though, but where's your heart at with the man? You know what I'm saying? Zechariah 7 1. He said, It came to pass in the fourth year of King Darius that the word of Yahuwah came unto Zechariah in the fourth day of the ninth month, even in Chisalu. When they had son unto the house of Elohim, Shariah, and Rigmalek, and their men to pray before Yahuwah, and to speak unto the priests which were in the house of Yahuwah of hosts, and to the prophets, saying, Should I weep in the fifth month, separating myself, as I have done these so many years? Then came the word of Yahuwah of hosts unto me, saying, Speak unto the people of the land, and to the priests, saying, When you fasted and mourned in the fifth and seventh month, even those seventy years, did ye at all fast unto me, even to me? And when you did eat and when you did drink, did you not eat for yourselves and drink for yourselves? Should you not hear the words which you who have cried by the former prophets when Jerusalem was inhabited and in prosperity and the cities thereof, thereof round about her when men inhabited the south plain? I want to ask you a question. He said, any time that you afflict your soul for me. Now, when we look at afflicting your soul, what's the first thing should come to your mind? What you say, Jim Daniel? When you hear, okay, he said, he said in the fifth and seventh month when you afflicted your soul, did you do that all for me or did you do it for yourself? So when we hear affliction of the soul, what the first thing come to your mind? You say fasting. What about you, Cor? I thought about it. I just afflicting his soul. What about you, uh, Brian? I'm going to say about it. Because we got Dwight say fasting, Cora say the master being suffering. What you got, Brian? Okay, he say the master too. What about you, Troy? Standing, like He's got a standing from sin. What about you, standing? Not doing with the flesh. What about you, Derek? Keeping commandments. What about you, Blow? Yeah, I say this. You know, ain't none of y'all answer were wrong. It took you a long time just to give a simple answer to that, sir. I didn't want to say what he said. It doesn't matter. You can say the same thing. Not That's why I took so long. <laughs> 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 You're all right. But the main thing I'm looking at is, is afflicting your abstaining. Abstaining. Because remember now, look at 1 Peter 4 and 1. We still hold in 1 Samuel 16. And uh Matthew chapter 6. For as much then as a Mashiach have suffered for us in the flesh, or being afflicted, right? Mm -hmm. Arm yourselves likewise with the same mind, for he that suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin, that he should no longer live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of Allah. Now, we looked in Isaiah 58, and he said, Is this not a fast which I have chosen for a man to afflict his soul and to bow down his head, right? We'll go look at Matthew 26. <laughs> now, I want you to look at Matthew chapter 26, and I want you to look at verse 26. And we're going to work our way around. <clears throat> we're still going to get back to the first Samuel 16. And we're still going to get back to what that means to Ezekiel 33. Y'all will. We got them tied all together, make it all make sense. And he says, and as they were eating, Yahushua took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. Hold what you got. Come back to Isaiah 58. He said, ain't this the day I told you to give your bread to the homie, right? Come on back to Isaiah 58. I didn't want y'all to see this now. Isaiah 58 and about verse 7. Make it about verse 6. He says, is, this not, is not this the fast that I have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burden, and to let the oppressed go free, and that ye break every yoke? Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, 
that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house. When thou see the naked, thou cover him, that thou hide not thyself from thy own flesh. Now, why would that be important? He said, this is a fast I've chosen for you to give your bread to the homer. But yet we see a mashiach telling them, do what? Took this bread and he told them what? This is my body. So now you come back to Matthew 26, and you actually see this man on the fast that he had chosen, giving his bread to the homer. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to turn around and look at and see how he'll bring the poor or the humble to his house. Then he's going to turn around and look at on the fair what he had chosen. Because you know Isaiah 50, they ain't talking about Day of Atonement. Yeah. Then you're going to turn around and see on the Day of Atonement, he said, this is the fast I chose for a man to afflict himself. Yeah. He said to give you bread to the hungry, <coughs> to bring the poor in your house, and to cover the naked. Yeah. <coughs> look at verse 27. I'll read 26 again. And as they were eating, Yahushua took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. For this is the blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. For I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Sound like this is a fast eater until now you're about to afflict yourself. This is a fast he done chosen because it said, let's look at Leviticus 23 just so you can see it in the law. Leviticus 23 and about verse uh, 26. Somehow, someway, y'all will. We'll swing back 1 Samuel 16. But just be patient. It ain't like we got nowhere to go, do we? You got somewhere to go? I don't want to hold you up, sir. I don't want to hold you up. Look like you're a man about town. And it says, And Yahuwah spake unto Moses, saying, Also in the tenth day of this seventh month there shall be a day of atonement, and it shall be a code convocation unto you. You shall afflict your soul, and look what it says, and offer a fire, a offering made by fire unto Yahuwah. Now we already know about that, right? Even if we turn around and you look at... uh. When he say you've been refined like silver in the fire, and you notice that what did it say that the trumpets were made out of? Out of silver. And you see Hamashiach already being that burnt offering, and he cried out over that burnt offering. And then you turn around on the tone, man, and you see again, furnace of affliction, fiery trial of his faith. We already read in Deuteronomy 33 before we started, a fiery law shall proceed from thy right hand. So you already know he got to be this offering made by fire. <laughs> Listen, what else he say? And you shall do no work in that same day. For it is a day of atonement to make atonement for you before Yahuwah, your Elohim. For whatsoever soul it be that shall not be afflicted in that same day, he shall be cut off from among his people. And whatsoever soul it be that do work, any work in that same day, the same soul will I destroy from among his people. You shall do no manner of work. It shall be a statue forever throughout your generations and all your dwellings. It shall be unto you a Shabbat of rest. You shall afflict your souls in the ninth day of the month at even. From even unto even, you shall celebrate your Shabbat. Now, let's see the question now. Look what he says should happen on this day. You shouldn't do no work, right? He said anybody that be afflicted who don't afflict their soul in this same day, they're going to be cut off. He says it's a day of atonement before you, before you, all right? Come over here to John chapter 9. Hold Matthew 26. He said on this day, ain't no work can be done. What, what day will come in when the Mashiach died? I'm not sure. Okay. I'm saying, well, what day it was? What was coming in, though? A Shabbat was coming in. Ain't that something? So that means no work could be done on that day then. Don't you realize this man dying was the atonement for your sins, therefore he got to fulfill that law too? Huh? What'd you say? What'd you say? Yes, I did. <laughs> yes, I did. John chapter 9. John chapter 9 and verse 1. Let's see what it says. And Yahushua passed by, and he saw a man which was blind from his birth. They also say on this fast was to let the oppressed go free too, right? And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Yahushua answered, Neither hath this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of Elohim should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. 
The night come when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Now, when we turn back around and we go look at Matthew 27, which you ain't got to go get it, you come back to Matthew 26. Ain't it something that he caused it to go dark at that particular time and this man died? Because he couldn't do no work. Because what is he while he up there on that? Because we, I mentioned this to y'all earlier. Leviticus 16 say, go get a goat. He said, a lot that fall on that goat, that's Yahuwah's goat. Mm -hmm. This the sin offering. You don't talk about to make atonement for your souls. Then they all have to place their hand on the goat. Mm -hmm. The scapegoat. Yeah. Them people placed their hands on the Masha, didn't they? All of them did. When they, when they walked up into him, say, come here, Masha, I prophesy. Why? Fire. Well, you imagine somebody mocking you and slapping you in your face at the same time? Yeah. I ain't even want to touch that part yet. I ain't even want to talk about that part right now. I didn't want to deal with somebody disrespecting you and slapping you in your face. Men, women, and children. Then after you mention all the other parts, you're talking about beard being pulled out, spit in my face. How about you hit me with some rock too? You know, I just seen a video or a picture of a man who's supposed to have made himself a, a seven and a half pound cross and yeah, put it on his bike and carrying it to his church. Yeah. Talking about he wanted to symbolize he going to take up his cross and follow up my shot. I said, you big dummy, how about you just do what he did and afflict yourself? You didn't need to put a seven and a half pound cross on your back, you dummy. He looked real tired too. You know he was tired. You know what I'm talking about? Tired physically and tired because he's stupid. <laughs> too much thinking. <laughs> because he, cause you know why? Because things be for show. Things be for show. You know what I'm saying? Things be for show. Come on back over here to Matthew 26. But y'all, don't y'all realize this here? I'm going to show y'all something now. I want y'all to see what Amashia say. He say this. He say a man who suffer in the flesh is doing this so he will no longer live his life in the flesh but to the will of the Most High. Don't come over here. You working right now. Oh, my bad. You already know. You, you do a little late for that. That we on the clock, sir. You can holler at me when I'm done, though. I give you three five. I don't know. But right now, <laughs> three up. But right now, we on the clock. You know what I'm saying? Come back to Matthew 20. I ain't being funny. Matthew 26. I want y'all to look at verse 37. We come right back after we read verse 37, swing back, right back right around to Matthew chapter 6 and verse, about verse 15. And I'm going to read to you what I want to read to you. Yeah, please cover them things up. I'm talking about the thing looking rough. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. You happy to see your mama? Ain't you? Now he can't even speak a whole sentence no more. He ain't seen his mama and got drunk. He's saying he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be very sorrowful and heavy. Then he saith unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. Come back to Matthew 6 and 15. He said his soul was sorrowful. That ain't mean he would walk around with his face balled up looking ugly. See, some of y'all be walking around here looking ugly. <laughs> Somebody went, well, what's wrong with you, Troy? Say, I'm hungry, man. Hungry. Go get something to eat. I can't eat right now. <laughs> now look at verse 16, I should say. Moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance. For they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast. Truly I say unto you, they have their reward. When thou fast, anoint thy head and wash thy face. What did the Mashiach do before he began to be afflicted? What happened? He, that he got anointed, didn't he? You know what I'm saying? She anointed his head though, right? Mm -hmm. Then you know in John chapter 13, he washed their hands and their feet too. So you know he did all that there, right? Same thing he tell you because he getting ready to, to fast himself. So it only makes sense he'll do the same thing. Then he say, for uh, for thou shalt appear, for thou shalt not say that, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy father which is in secret, and thy father which see in secret shall reward thee openly. And you're gonna see that a Mashiach fasted in secret, and the father reward him openly. But I'm gonna read y'all something. Cause I told y'all about it, what these people be having y'all doing, and some of y'all say you done did it. Y'all did it last year, yeah, yeah. asking for forgiveness. <laughs> hey, when you know better, you do better. Yeah. I hope so. 
You would hope so. Now, I'm going to read this to you. It says, she said, just get one off the food, sir. It says, the Shulon Aruk. Y'all know what that is. Or Oran Hayim, six, chapter 606 and verse 1. The Shulon Aruk, or Ora Hayim, 606-1, writes that one does not earn atonement on Yom Kippur for offenses committed against other people unless he receives their forgiveness. Therefore, it is imperative for a person to approach those people whom he has wronged during the year to ask them forgiveness before Yom Kippur. This applies to both financial and verbal offenses. In the case of a financial offense, of course, one must return the funds in question. Continuing on. It says, the Shulon Aruk writes that if the victim does not grant forgiveness when the offender first approaches him, the offender shall return to him as many as three times. He then earns atonement if the, if the victim still refused to forgive as Bahur Alacha, commentary by Rabbi Yisrael Mir Kagan, who lived from 1839 to 1933, notes, it appears from the Shulon Aruch's presentation of this halacha that a person should approach the victim accompanied by three people. Even when he approaches the victim for the first time, according to the Shulon Aruch, he should bring the three people uh, along with him, the Rabbam, Rabbi Moshe Mimendos, from 1135 to 1204 is when he lived. However, on the basis of the Talmud, Yasha Shalal Mimi maintains that when the offender approaches the victim for the first time, he does not have to bring three people with him. If the victim refuses to forgive, then he shall return as many as three times together with three other people. The Kaf Hayim Rabbi Yaakov Hamar Sofer, who died in 1939, writes that the accepted practice follows the Rambam's view, and thus one is not required to bring three people the first time he approaches his fellow to request forgiveness. The importance of requesting forgiveness for one's fellow before Yom Kippur cannot be overstated. According to some opinions, one cannot even earn atonement for sins committed against God if he does not receive forgiveness from the people whom he had wronged. Now there is no word in this book that say the Most High can't forgive you if a nigga don't forgive you. Furthermore, the Kaf Hayim writes that if a person does not seek his friend's forgiveness before Yah Kippur, then the prosecuting angel comes before God and argues against this person. The angel contends that the person is not concerned about his sins as evidenced by his unwillingness to ask for his forgiveness. Therefore, should not he? Uh, he say, therefore, should not be granted atonement on Yah Kippur. Michael. One must therefore make every effort before Yom Kippur to make amends with all those whom he had wronged over the course of the year. Finally, the sages also emphasize the importance of granting forgiveness to others. The rabbis teach that one should not be cruel by refusing to grant forgiveness to somebody who offended him. A person who willingly grants forgiveness to others will earn God's forgiveness for whatsoever sins he may have committed. Sound like he just took a Mashiach words and made it his own. If you haven't noticed the pattern, the pattern of what they have done is they have separated a Mashiach from the whole play. Mm. Summary, it is important to ask for forgiveness before Yom Kippur from all those whom one had wronged during the year. If the individual refuses to forgive, then one should return him, to him with three people. Uh, as many as three more times to regress forgiveness. And at that point, he need not ask forgiveness any further. It is proper for the victim to grant the offender forgiveness. It also says here that during this period, Jews were encouraged to seek out anyone that may have, they have, may have offended and securely request forgiveness so that the new year can begin with a clean slate. So you know the whole process of seeing our people do this. Hold on, we got another one. He said the process of repentance is called teshuva. It is a crucial part of Yom Kippur. Although many people think that transgressions from the previous year are forgiven through prayer, fasting, and participation in Yom Kippur services. Jewish tradition teaches that only offenses committed against God can be forgiven on Yom Kippur. Hence, it is important that people make an effort to reconcile with others before participating in Yom Kippur. 
So when you see all these dudes saying, you know, if I offended you and all this here, you niggas were following the taboo. Because when we read about this in Leviticus, did you read anything about he telling you go ask somebody for forgiveness on the day? He said this was a day for you to afflict your soul, wasn't it? So where they get this from? You know how many of our people turned around and did it just like what they said to do, to do it before the day come in. So who they really following? Look at Matthew chapter 15 about verse 7. What'd you say? I'm just messing with you. You don't know nothing. I could have been serious. Now I got to think about it. What? Things that ask his shoulders if he has something wrong. You ain't even trained shoulders. Don't ask him so he can get his joke off. Ask him so he can get his joke off. He's just trying to get his punchline off. Help him out, man. Be a straight man. I'm not going to be a straight man. No, I mean, obviously, y'all don't know. <laughs> <laughs> see, right there, see, right there, I was a straight man on that one now. Set his joke up. Go on, set his joke up. Go on, set his joke up, man. Yeah, he ain't want to be. Verse 7. Verse 7 of Matthew 15. He said, you hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, this people draw nigh unto me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me, but in vain they do worship me, teaching for the doctrine and commandments of men. See, come back and look at Colossians 2 and 21. That's what you got to be careful on. Are we following the teachings and commandments of Yahuwah, or are we doing what men say do? Because every individual Hebrew today that said, anybody who I've offended, I extend, you know what I'm talking about? I humbly ask that you forgive me if fallen man. Because nowhere in our law did it tell you to do that. He tell you don't bear any grudge against your neighbor. You know what I'm talking about? So you supposed to forgive your neighbor anyway, because that's in our law. He didn't never tell you to wait till to the tenth day of the seventh month for you to do that. Two and twenty of Colossians. Wherefore, if you be dead with the Mashiach from the rudiments of the world, why, as though living in the world, are you subject to ordinances? Touch not, taste not, handle not, which are all to perish with the using after the commandments and doctrines of men. Now, he's asking a question there. So you don't think you're going to perish if you do this? Don't you realize, man, as hard as it sounds, and I know some people will be like if they see this, but well, what's wrong with asking your brother for forgiveness? Ain't nothing wrong with it. But if you're doing it the, uh, the ninth day of the seventh month before the tenth day of the seventh month, there's something wrong with it because you following the Talmud, you dummy. You know what I'm saying? Like straight up, you following the Talmud, dummy. Because if I ask you, brother, show me in the law where he told you to do that on Day of Atonement, you can't show me that. You can't even show me an example of our ancestors doing that in their word. The first thing, you need to study Israelite history. I don't need to study nothing. Show me where that's attached to the law, and then I'll be satisfied. Then we can go look at Israelite history. I see brothers say that we need to look at Israelite history and customs. No, I don't. I need to look at a Mashiach. That's what I need to look at. Come on back to Matthew 26, though. He said, this is a day to let the oppressed go free. We in verse 37. But he said, for a man to bow down his soul like a bull rush and spread sackcloth and ashes on them. You know when you're in sackcloth and ashes under you, you mourning. Y'all know that, right? Matthew 26 and 36, or 37, I should say. You all right, Stan? And he took with them Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. 
And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thy will be done. But as thou will. Now, didn't he say that uh, this was a fast that a man should bow down his soul before the Most High to flit himself? And didn't Peter say that he that suffered in his flesh will no longer live to the flesh but to the will of the Most High? Now, you see, this man is going through affliction, and he's suffering, and he's fasting, and he's sitting back looking at, I will no longer live to the will of my flesh. I will live to the will of my Father. He said, not what I want, but what thou will. So this would actually be an acceptable fast under y'all. You know what? A lot of times we sitting back looking at a lot of people fast. They fast are not acceptable to y'all because you're not fasting to him. You fasting for yourself. You know what I'm talking about? A lot of people they fast for yourself, and then you turn around and you look at y'all when you don't get what you want, and you sit back and look at. So you didn't acknowledge my fast? Did you not see? Then that would have said to Zachariah. He said, "Did you fast to me or did you fast for yourself?" You know what I'm saying? So then you got to sit back and look at: Are you putting stuff to the side for for him, or are you just doing that for yourself to appear righteous before men? You know what I'm talking about? Because he said, you hear my words, sound real nice to you, like somebody playing an instrument. You know what I'm talking about? But you won't do them. Let's go back to 1 Samuel 16, where we try to continue to put all these things, because we got to show the oppressed going free. We already see how he gave it bread to the hungry. Because what did he tell you in Matthew chapter 5, right? He said, Baruch are those that what? Hunger after righteousness, what? They shall be filled, right? He said, you'll be blessed you hunger after righteousness. He told you that and saw he said, open your mouth wide and I will fill it. I see you, Lizzie. <coughs> I see you, Lizzie. <coughs> Lizzie's supposed to be in the bed. But she hiding out around the corner. <laughs> Come on, Tizzy. She's not going to move. Now, I want y'all to sit back and look at verse 16 again. Then I'm going to sit back and show you how some of the things that Amashiach did as speaking words as somebody playing us words. Because he qualified his words as being as an instrument. Mm -hmm. We see that he said David was able to play an instrument to, to be able to make this evil spirit come up off Saul, right? Just bear with me as we read verse 16 again and work that out. Because remember now, he said that the, the lot of that goat, that's Yahuwah's lot. Turn around and see this same thing. It said, now let our Lord now command thy servants, which are before thee, to seek out a man, one man, who is a cunning player on the heart, which means his words are skillful then. And it shall come to pass. When the evil spirit from Elohim is upon thee, he shall play with his hand, and thou shalt be well. And Saul said unto his servants, Provide me now a man that can play well and bring him to me. He said, Give me one. Don't you sit back and realize back in Genesis 22, what did Abraham tell Isaac? When Isaac said, Well, where is the lamb for the... He said, Y'all will provide a burnt offering. You know what I'm saying? Remember, it says the lot that fall on that one goat, that's Yah's offering. That's his. See, look at Leviticus 16, just so y'all know that. All we turn about really looking at is y'all provided a man to afflict his soul or fast on his soul to be able to atone for your sins that you would no longer be oppressed, that you would no longer be naked, and that you would no longer be hungry, and that your burden would go, and that the yoke would be light. Y'all should know this man said all these things. What you say, boy? It ain't funny. You see the look he made? You gonna say something you ain't had no business. Your daddy gonna get you. You ain't gonna repeat that is. You ain't gonna repeat your daddy gonna get you. 16 and 6. Your daddy gonna get you? Whooping? Whooping? He said he'd rather see Pop than Mom Duke, cause Mom Duke gonna beat the mud off of him. He said, and Aaron shall, shall offer his bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself, and make atonement for himself and for his house. 
and he shall take the two goats and present them before you who at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Aaron shall cast lots upon the two goats, one lot from Yahuwah and the other lot for the scapegoat. And Aaron shall bring the goat upon which is Yahuwah's lot fell and offer him for a sin offering. But the goat on which the lot fell to the scapegoat shall be presented alive before Yahuwah to make atonement with him and let him go for a scapegoat into the wilderness. Don't you really? So if you sit back and look at a scapegoat, what happened with the scapegoat? But not just fleeing into the wilderness. What else happening with the scapegoat? What's the scapegoat representative of? All the sins of the people falling on this goat, which should take you to what? The reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. You know what I'm talking about? See, you got to remember, he both of these. He the sin offering goat and he the scapegoat. Because he say, take this scapegoat and put all the sins of the people on him and send him out into the wilderness. Send him away. See, read what he tell you like this. We went over this here last year, man. You go back and look at last year's video. It's all enough. Verse 15. Then he shall kill the goat of the sin offering that is for the people and bring his blood within the veil. And to do with that blood as he did with the blood of the bullock and sprinkle it upon the mercy seat and before the mercy seat. And he shall make atonement for the Kodesh place because of the uncleanliness of the children of Yasharal, because of their transgressions and all their sins. So show out, so shall he do for the tabernacle of the congregation that will remain among them in the midst of their uncleanliness. And there shall be no man in the tabernacle of the congregation when he go in to make atonement in the Kodesh place until he come out and have made atonement for himself and for his household and for all the congregation of Yasharal. Now let's look at verse 21. So this is what had to be done with the first goat. Y'all already know, Hamashiach went in the Kodesh place and he didn't come out till it was time for him to get up then, didn't it? Now let's look at verse 21, look what it says. And Aaron shall lay both his hands upon the head of the live goat and confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Yasharal and all their transgressions and all their sins, putting them upon the head of the goat and shall send them away by the hand of a fit man into the wilderness and the goat shall bear upon him all their iniquities unto a land not inhabited, and he shall let the goat go in the wilderness. So he say, all the sins of the people is going to rest on this one goat, and he's going to send him away. Now you turn around and you sit back and look at it. Let's come back over here to John chapter 18, and let's just see what the people said about it. Because they say the goat got to go away then, right? Let's just see what these people said out there now. Well, Kingston, you ain't play no games with that, did you? Eighteen and thirteen. John eighteen and thirteen. Everybody all right? Y'all all right? Y'all on this phone? Y'all all right? He say when. He said, when Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought Yahushua forth and sat down in the judgment seat in a place that is called the pavement, but in Hebrew, Gabbatha. And it was the preparation of the Passover, and about the sixth hour he saith unto the Yahudim, Behold your king. But they cried out, Away with him. Away with him. So right then and there, you see him being the scapegoat and the lot that uh, or the other at the same time. Because he got to be both. You know what I'm saying? Pilate said unto them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then delivered he there, him therefore unto them to be crucified. And Yahushua took, and they took Yahushua and led him away. Who did he just give the master to? Who did he just give Yahushua to? Who did Pilate just give him to? He just gave him to the chief priest. Don't the law say the high priest got to put their hands on him and put all the sins of the people? And who did they just give him to? He's saying he bearing his state went forth into a place of a skull, which is called in the Hebrew Golgotha, where they crucified him and two other with him on the either side one and Yahushua in the midst. And Pilate wrote a title and put it on the state and the writing was Yahushua of Nazareth, the king of the Yahudim. This title then read many of the Yahudim, for the place where Yahushua was crucified was nigh to the city, and it was written in Hebrew, 
Greek, and Latin. So you don't understand this here? This was outside the camp then. It wasn't in Jerusalem. He wasn't in the city. Matter of fact, look at Deuteronomy 23 and 12. What? Can you see you all right, son? All right. 23 and 10. Come here, Kingston. You all right? You all right? Go sit down. Oh, yeah, we got to hit y'all with that olive oil, too. Deuteronomy 23 and 10. If there be among you any man that is not clean by reason of uncleanliness that chants him by night, then he shall go abroad out of the camp. He shall not come within the camp. But it shall be when evening come on, he shall wash himself with water. And when the sun is down, he shall come into the camp again. Thou shalt have a place without the camp, whither thou shalt go forth abroad. What do you think that would mean? He said, if there be any uncleanliness, that chance a man by night, then he shall go abroad out the camp, he shall not come within the camp. But when the evening come, he'll wash himself with water. When the sun down, he can come back in the camp. Y'all don't know, how, you, you, you got an idea, Jim? Give it to me then, please, sir. There you go. Let's look and see that. Though. Let's see when they came and got him, and then he came outside the camp. All this is to make atonement for you. Let's look at Matthew 26 and about verse... Uh, Could it say he had an issue of blood, too? 44, yeah, but we'd have dealt with that in the past. You know what I'm saying? Long while. So it's a video on that too? You know what they say? Any manner of uncleanliness. What would make a man unclean before you who are but sin? Then you just realize we just read it said that the blood of this goat had to be shed because of the uncleanliness of the congregation of Yasharah. Didn't they say that them people didn't even want to come in the judgment hall because they would have been unclean for unleavened bread for the Passover. They wouldn't have been able to eat it. So that means some man of uncleanliness had to came in the camp but these people didn't even want to step in the judgment hall. You know what I'm talking about? They ain't even want to. We got to read that then, don't it? They ain't even want to step in there because they would have been unclean. What would have made them unclean? They would have been in the fire because this, because they said this man's a sinner. They finna kill him, which would mean they believe that he is unclean. Even when we turn around, we'll sit back and look at that in Matthew where it say he cast out spirits by an unclean spirit. They were saying the man was unclean the whole time. Which is still going back to what we were going end up referencing on how his voice as as somebody who plays skillful on an instrument. Because that's the only way that David was able to get the evil spirit from afflicting Saul was to play well on the harp on the instrument. And he said that this man bore Then he said Ezekiel's words was like somebody who sung well or who played well on what? An instrument. Matthew 26 and about verse 45. Or 40, uh, 45 is good. Then come he to his disciples and saith unto them, Sleep on now and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hand of sinners. Rise, let us be going. Behold, he that is, at, is, at, is at hand that doth betray me. You know if a sinner unclean, what did, he, what did he tell that man? He say, Man, Master, let me go bury my father. What did he tell him? Let the dead bury the dead. And if you're dead, what are you? And if sinners came and grabbed this man, what are they? And if they touch him, what that make him? There it is. He say, rise, let us be going. Behold, he is at that hand that doth betray me. And while he yet spake to Judas, one of the twelve came, and with him a great multitude, with swords and staves from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now he that betrayed him gave him a sign, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, the same as he hold him fast. Forthwith he came to Yahushua and said, Hail, Master, and kissed him. And behold, one of them which were with you who should stretch out his hand and drew his sword and stroke the servant of the high priest and smote off his ear. So we know what time of night is nighttime, right, when they came and got him. What did Deuteronomy 23 and 10 say? If there be any man of uncleanliness, then let him go outside the camp. Where did they take him? They took him to the chief high priest's house, right? Took him outside of Jerusalem because he can't come here. You in here, this whole place dirty. We got to take you out of here. 
See, come on, get your Hebrews 13 real fast. Mm -hmm. So you got to turn around and sit back as forth as you looking at how Mashiach became uncleanliness. You wouldn't be unclean, but you got to be willing to do what he did, which is to go outside and suffer or afflict yourself outside the camp or outside the world. Or as Isaiah told you, touch not the unclean thing and come out from among them. See, that's the thing people don't want to do. That's why he's sitting back telling you, when you afflicted yourself this day, did you do it for me or did you do it for yourself? Who did you do it for? Who did you do it for? All right, Kingston. Hebrews 13 and, and about verse 9. Oh, that's good. Yahushua HaMashiach, the same yesterday and today and forever. Because the word been since the world began. Ain't nothing changed. Be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrines. Remember I was telling y'all, brother came in and said, I seen a brother yesterday, and no disrespect to him. But I seen a brother yesterday, what'd he say? Oh, the body make protein. What we need meat for. You know what I'm saying? Now, you know them white folks, when it come to science, they lie about a lot of stuff. You know what I'm talking about? But if you lift weights, you know full well your body don't produce protein. Because if you lift weights heavy enough, your body is depleted and it cries out for food. You know what I'm talking about? I done worked out before and be like, boy, this thing like this here, boy, needs something in here. Now, if my body was producing protein, it wouldn't even do that. Even though protein is not even what fuels the body. All protein does is help repair muscle tissue. The body is ran off carbohydrates. You know what I'm saying? If you don't have carbohydrates, you will not have energy, and you won't be able to do nothing. You know what I'm saying? You got young dudes that think you live weight with protein. You don't live weight with protein. You live weight with carbohydrates. You know what I'm talking about? I'm for real, though. You live weight with carbohydrates. That's when, you know, your body take carbohydrates and turn it into glucose, which is sugar. You know what I'm saying? And if you time it right, then you won't get an insulin spike. And when you get an insulin spike, you know what happened? You know what happened? Crash. Not only you do crash, but you know what that crash results into? Fatness. Body fat. You know what I'm talking about? When that insulin level spike in your body, that's why people be on them low-carb diet because it make your carb, carb uh, intake low. So therefore, your insulin is lower and your body will not respond to that to store it as fat. You know what I'm talking about? So dude be saying stuff, you got to get nutrients from food. If you if there if your pro if your body produce protein, that means your body should produce carbohydrates too. And that means your body should produce dietary fat. And your body should produce dietary fiber, which means in actuality, you wouldn't need to eat then. You know what I'm talking about? So dudes say stuff and don't and then people get like this here. We were messing with you about it on Shabbat though. That's a diverse and strange doctrine arguing about if the earth round or flat. You know what I'm saying? Because that gets you carried about the things that ain't even know. What's up? Dude say he's out here saying he don't believe gravity is true. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he say he believe it's a lie. He say it's our weight that hold us down. But yet if I can, if you strong enough, you can pick somebody up. And why doesn't their weight bring them back down? You know what I'm saying? How come when somebody punches somebody hard enough, they can fly two, three feet if he catch them good enough? That's what gravity is. Our weight. That's how we're trying to do gravity. My point exactly. You know what I'm saying? But the basis of what he's talking about, he's saying he don't believe there's no planets besides Earth. You know what I'm saying? All right. Huh? <laughs> hey, man, you know, because he, because I don't know what he's been looking at, but I guess he believed that, you know, from Sunday he's been looking at it's a lie. You know what I'm saying? Whether there are other planets in the sky, I ain't never looked at them and seen them with my own eye through a telescope, so I can't speak on it. I know other people say I've seen them. And another dude's response was Project Bluebeam. Oh. How many of y'all in here are familiar with Project Bluebeam? I know Stanley is. <laughs> in his defense, I put him on. I showed you that one. So you the reason why he know about Project no, Bluebeam. Any of y'all the... over there know about Project, about Project Bluebeam? Bluebeam? I was the first conspiracy theorist. Well, Project Bluebeam is they saying that they can make hologram. Like they say they're going to fake Hamashiach's return or fake an alien invasion. But I, I, I know that people got a lot of a lot of technology. But if you think that they can uh fake a whole solar system, I think you're giving them just a tad bit too much credit. <coughs> That's just me personally. 
just a tad bit too much credit. You know what I'm saying? Because the simple fact, though, these people named the planets after their idolatrous gods. You know what I'm saying? Let's start with the first one, Mercury, which go is in which eventually, if you research it long enough, you're going back to Egypt, you're going back to Mizraim, Venus, Mars, which we know is the god of war, Jupiter, Saturn, which is who the day Saturday is named after. It's Saturn's day. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, who else? Uranus. <laughs> that's, like just Uranus. 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 Yeah. that's how you say it, Uranus? It's Uranus. No, he says it's Uranus. Uranus. And what's the other one? Pluto. They say it's not a planet anymore. Yeah, I know. They say it's just a big rock. <laughs> Neptune, which is nothing but the god of the sea, which is Poseidon. You know what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying? It, and we sit back and look at it because what does Jeremiah chapter 10 and verse 1 say? Be not dismayed at the signs of the Shamahim because the heathen are dismayed at them. These people took their time. These people were smoking marijuana and named it cannabis because they were smoking to the Dog Star series. They seen the Dog Star and they say, let's name it cannabis because that's the God we serve. He said, it's a mighty God we serve. We on this bud too. I'm good and greased. Well, I found out, I said, boy, time to put this down. I don't want to do nothing with a bunch of faggots were doing. So that means they were smoking weed, getting hit in the booty, worshiping the dog star at the same time. Oh, it wasn't on that dog star. It was on that dog star. You can give it all the names you want. You can get the names all you want. But nevertheless, the scientific name for marijuana is cannabis. And the Egyptians are the one who gave it that name because they were smoking to the Dog Star series. You know what I'm talking about? But what the point is, is, is that when they seen the luminaries, they automatically associated it with their idolatrous gods. And you notice out of all the planets, it's only one that is not named after an idolatrous god, and that's the one that we dwell on. And if we actually look at the Hebrew word of rats and you see what it is, it actually points right back to a masha. Every single, every definition of it. Every definition of it. No, I was just talking, was that you or was that him? I was just talking to him about that maybe yesterday. That every definition for the word of rats or the word earth, it come, all of it's him. All of it's him. All of it's him. I've mentioned that y'all before, before even looking at the Hebrew definition of the word earth, that all that is him. We don't have time to deal with that right now. Future time. But I'm just sitting here telling you. You look at the definition, I guarantee you look at the definition, you ought to be able to see him. Fertile soil, land, people. That's just a couple other meanings. Come over here to Hebrew chapter 3, though, because, I mean, let me finish this in Hebrews 13, then we'll get Hebrew chapter 3. I'm telling you, man, I'm going to be honest with you, man. There is not much that this man did not fulfill. Not just the stuff you read, even meaning the words, the alphabet, everything. Every single solid tip. The man did not tell you, search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify me because he thought that was just something hip to say. <coughs> he meant that. You see what I'm telling you? He meant that. That means everything. When I say everything, I mean everything is about him. You know what I'm saying? The names of the majority of the people in there are about him. The actions of 99.9% .9 of the people in there are about him. You know what I'm talking about? Every single solitary thing, everything is about him. When he say that things were made by him and for him, that in all things that he might have preeminence, that's exactly what he meant. See, this is the thing. I'll sit back while I was reading y'all what them rabbis say. Oh, you do this and do this. Their whole objective is to cut this man out. They want you to go asking for forgiveness to everybody else before they talk about so you can start off the new year on a clean slate. That's pure stupidity. And the word part is, Hebrews run behind it. That's why people mock us. 
You know what I'm saying? When you come and tell them, oh, I know I'm an Israelite. Oh, I'm from the seed of Jacob. Because they don't, they don't sit back and think about, oh, what you hearing or what you learning. They look at all them idiotic fools that y'all conversate with and y'all were friends with and that y'all argue with and that y'all go back and forth. Don't you realize if somebody see you going back and forth with them people, they think you just as stupid as the individual you arguing with? You know what I'm talking about? Don't you realize, boy, if you hit them once, they want a ball. You hit them twice, I'm gone. Paul told you first admonition, second admonition, third, <coughs> reject. If a man be ignorant, let him, what, I'm going to sit back and go back and forth with you both. Like when I was telling the brother yesterday, I said, look here, man. Didn't I just talk to y'all about people telling you not to eat meat and all that type of stuff? I said, look here, man. You don't want to eat meat. That's your personal business. I said, but be careful about alluding or implying that you shouldn't do it. Because now you're going to mess around and say, well, y'all has made good. You calling it evil. If you want to say, I don't want to eat the meat because what these white folks doing to it, I ain't got no problem with that. Because you ain't saying it's a problem with the meat. You saying it's a problem with what, what they do to it. But when you just come out right and say, that's not the original diet. You just totally disregard what the law say, and now you saying what this man made is good, is evil, and you going to hell for that. Because that man say, woe unto them that call good evil and evil good. And if he said that that cow or that deer or that chicken is sanctified by his word and is good for a man to eat, and you say it's not, you just said what he said is good, you just said it was evil. That man say destruction to you. You think that's just because somebody says Shabbat on Sunday and not and, and on the first day and not the seventh? You think you think that that, that, that that's cool because they say you can eat pork? But the word say no, that's everything. Man, if that man says something good, you ain't got no business speaking against it. Whether you choose to do it or not, that's your personal preference. You know what I'm talking about? Tam and pale vegans, we don't sit back, they don't sit back and look at y'all, y'all meat eaters. Y'all are dead wrong. They don't do none of that. And get what? We don't say nothing to them about them not eating it. What do we do? We make accommodation for them, even though they come prepared anyway. You know what I'm saying? They come prepared anyway, but yet and still, though, we make sure that, hey, man, is it certain things to make accommodation for them because we respect that. If that's how you choose to eat, that's how you choose to eat. And Tamara tell you, it's on her end what had her start. It wasn't the meat. It's what they were doing to the animals. She didn't care for that. Things that she seen made her like, you know what? Unless I grow it, I mean, unless I raise it and kill it myself, I don't really care to eat that. How can you be mad at that? You know what I'm saying? But if somebody come up behind it and say, you shouldn't eat meat because the original diet was, or because such and such said, man, but he told Noah, all this stuff over here, you can smash that. That's good enough for me. I'm going to bite Betsy on a bike. I'm going to go holler at that barnyard pimp when I get ready. If I want some Vincent, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bite Bambi then. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Buffalo, hey, you know what I'm saying? Cause like I said, I done seen a bison burger. I wouldn't mind one. See how he tastes. I might like it, might not like it. You know what I'm saying? I want to eat a lamb chop, I'm going to smash that. You know what I'm saying? If you offended at me eating lamb chops, then guess what? If I'm with you, then I wouldn't eat that while you present me. If you vegan and me eating meat, because the word take Paul Tabor, if that offends, if I offend my brother and meat, then I won't offend my brother and meat. If he's vegan, I'm going to be vegan while I'm with him then to not offend him. You know what I'm talking about? I'm, I done did that before. If that's how you eat, that's going to offend you, then I wouldn't ask you to prepare me this or cook this here or I'm going to bring meat in here then. Now, we know Pell and Tamar being vegan don't offend her. You can bring what you want to eat. Ain't going to change the fact that you see that taco right there? See that roast right there? It's got my name on it. You know what I'm talking about? Straight up, though. But you know, go to their house. I mean, if I go to their house, then I know how they eat. Then why would I come in their house with that? That's what Paul meant. I make myself all things under all men. If my brother and sister are vegan. I'm trying to rent them to the world. I ain't finna come in. Y'all should eat meat. Ain't nothing wrong. That's, a, that's the least of my concern. What? You know what I'm saying? Dude, don't think. Ain't got no skill. All they come in is do one thing. Argue. You know who like to argue? Women. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no good. You coming in off the rip. When I say that, I mean that that's a feminine trait. A man shouldn't be coming in the first thing he's looking to do, especially with the word, is argue with a nigga, battle with a nigga. You come in the battle? You know what I'm saying? Go on Smack TV with that, man. I'm for real, though. 
Dudes treat the word like it's a battle rap. I got to show who's the most superior. This is what people don't make people not want to do this. Because they looking at this. Why would I want to do this? You know what I'm saying? I done got in a discussion with dudes. You know what I'm talking about? And really it just fact, like, you can tell when you're in a discussion with dude and it's a give and take. We might not agree, but it's a give and take. We can have a discord for a particular period of time. I done been in those. I done been in somewhere, I'm going to stop talking to you now. Because you are stupid. You know what I'm saying? It's very rare that you can get in a discourse with a man and say, we might not agree. Okay, you're giving me your stuff. Well, check this out then. That's very rare. Because most dudes are not trying to come to the uh, conclusion. They trying to show that I'm superior than you. I'm going to tell you something about the word of y'all, man. It's not a competition. You did not see the apostles in competition with each other. You did not see the prophets in competition with each other. We just read that on Shabbat where Moses said, you envy for my sake? The first thing this man said is, I hope that y'all, all these people could do it. You know what I'm talking about? It ain't about just me. I hope all y'all can do it. Because that's the mind frame you got. It should just be reserved to you. And they ain't, that's the same thing when they say, he say, Master, they don't walk with us. He say, man, whoever with me is with me. He said, they with me, they with me. They can't be against me. You know what I'm saying? He said, just because they don't walk with us don't mean they not with us. You know what I'm saying? That's how people look at stuff. Good gracious. Verse 9, one more time. Though. He said, be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrines, for it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace, not with meats, which have not profited them that have been occupied therein. We have an altar whereof they have no right to eat, which serve the tabernacle. For the body of those beasts whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin are burnt without the camp. You know what he's talking about? He talking about atonement right here, ain't he? That's the day he talking. Ain't that's when the high priest bring it in the sanctuary? That's the only, it's only one day he bring that blood inside the sanctuary. He only do that one day of the year now. He said, wherefore, Yahushua, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffer without the gate. Let us go therefore unto him without the camp bearing his reproach. Because you know if you got a reproach on you, you're unclean. They say you couldn't come back into the camp till that even, right? Mm -hmm. Let's look at Matthew 28. Let's see when he came back in the camp then. It's like that's one of the things I see people like to argue about. They like to argue about when the day starts. They like to argue about when the Shabbat is. They like to argue about all the type of stuff. The day starts in the morning. All right, man. I seen dudes argue about this for two years straight. I'm telling you, my man Sal had people debate that on his show like three times. Three times. After the first time, it need to be over with. If a nigga ain't got, they ain't gonna never get it. The dude be like, "This is a big. This y'all done seen it. This the first thing a nigga want to scream. This is a big matter in Israel. We need to figure this out. No, we don't. You know what I'm saying? But the thing is, when nigga want to argue, ain't that what they say? It's a big matter in Israel. We need to figure this out. Ain't that what they say? When they want to argue, that's what they say. We need, to get, we need to settle this matter. Esau is not the white man. We need to settle this matter. In the 12 tribe chart accurate, we need to settle this matter. Well, what did the world say? You done seen it? Why, I need to, why we need to debate about it seven times? If a nigga ain't got it the first time, maybe the second, he ain't never going to get it. <coughs> I, I thought she was going to start singing in vogue in here. We're going to put you out. What? Well, you don't know who that is, do you? My apologies. <laughs> so you, so what you is? You is caretaker. Oh, you know? Hey, I'm sitting there telling you now. At the same time, though, when that man said that, he was being sarcastic. But I'm not. I'm not letting you know that. But when Cain said that, he was being sarcastic. He was being a nigga. <laughs> I'm for real though. What did up? He was being a nigga. Am I my brother's keeper? Where your brother at? I'm my brother's keeper. I keep up with that nigga. I don't know where that nigga is. <laughs> that was rough though. If you actually look at the content, what's going on, that's what he was saying. When he said, man, what can't we wear able at? I don't know. I keep, I keep up with that nigga. I don't keep up with that nigga. Ain't that funny though that we say that line though and don't realize when you go back and look at it. He was being a nigga. 
No, he done killed the man. No, he done killed him. Am I my brother's keeper? Obviously, you ain't keep him alive, nigga. <laughs> but you know, the crazy part is, though, a lot of times when you look out in the streets and you hear somebody say that, they've been done stabbed that man in the back. I ain't never uttered them words to nobody, but when you when I sat back and look at it, I'm my brother's keeper. They always turn cold on that man. Every time to it never failed. Matthew 28 and 1. We'll come back to Hebrews 3 and 1 in a minute. Because he said he had he had to offer a sin offering for him and his whole house, right? He said, in the end of the Shabbat, as it began to dawn towards the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other to the to see the sepulchre. So if it began to dawn, that means the sun began to rise. Could mean the sun done went down, would mean this man could come back in the camp. And what does he end up doing? Let's look at about verse 6. And let's see what ends up happening if he come back in the camp. And then we'll come back to John 18, 23 and see if them people say we got to kill. We don't want to be unclean. Because remember, we talked about that too. They said when we won't touch him, we won't be unclean. He said he is not here, for he is risen. And as he said, he said, come see the place where the master lay and go quickly and tell the disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he go before, before you into Galilee and, shall ye, and there shall you see him. Lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy and did run to bring the disciples word. And as they went to tell the disciples, behold, Yahushua met them saying, all hail. And they held him by his feet and worshiped him. Then said Yahushua unto them, Be not afraid, go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee, and there they shall see me. So now he able to come back in the camp. He clean now. Don't you know wherever the Ruach HaKodesh dwell there is cleanliness? You don't talk about Because you got to remember one thing. What one thing y'all said he can't be in? He got, how many times we look in the law and he say he had to get his uncleanliness in the camp? I got to go. So y'all got to get that out of here. Then I can come back in here. This in here, I can't come in here. That's what you got to look at when you look at your vessel. You know what I'm saying? Your tabernacle. Your house. If you want that man to come dwell there, you got to get that uncleanliness out. That's why Paul told us in 2 Corinthians 7 and 1, we got to cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting Kodesh in the fear of the Most High. Then he can come dwell there. He can't come dwell in that house if it's dirty. You know what I'm talking about? That means all that stuff, it got to go. Got to clean your house up. Some of y'all get to probably spend more time talking about how you're going to clean your actual house up instead of cleaning your house up. Come over here, John 18, 23. Look, bye. Look at them. They see you on that cheese too. They see you. They see you over there cheesing, little Mike. Look, Mike! Now you don't want to cheese. <laughs> Look, Mike! Yeah. There you He said, Now Annas sent him bound unto Caspius, the high priest. Yeah. Simon Peter stood and warmed himself. Then said, Therefore unto him, Are thou not also one of his disciples? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, being his kinsman, whose ear Peter cut off, said, Did I not see thee in the garden with him? Peter denied him again, and immediately the cock crew. Then they led Yahushua from Caphias unto the hall of judgment, and it was early. And they themselves went not into the judgment hall, lest they should be defiled, but that they might eat the Passover, because you seen it were early. That means it was morning time. See, if it had been nighttime, they might have went in there with them. Because then when the sun went down again, they would have been clean. They know that when they'd have been scarred. So you got to remember, he's becoming unclean. Look at 2 Corinthians 5 and 20. He's becoming unclean now. If he that scapegoat and all the sin, because you just sat back and said, read the accusation. Because if they say he's saying he's the king of Yahudin, they were saying he was blaspheming and what? Mm -hmm. You don't talk about, but you got to remember, that's the sin of Yasharah being laid on him. Because what have we been doing? Blaspheming. How do we blaspheme it? Because the name of Yahuwah had been profane or blasphemed among the heathen because of you. You know what I'm talking about? Ain't that what he told you in Ezekiel 36? Ain't that what he told David? He said, now you've given the enemies of my enemies a chance to blaspheme? 
Don't you realize that was the sin of Yasharal, that your disobedience called people to blaspheme? Because that's what you were doing. Every time you worship an idol God, every time you lay with somebody who wasn't your wife, remember he told that in Titus. He said he told the women to do all these things that the word Allah be not blasphemed. He said when he put you up out of this house, out of the land, and he destroyed this house, and the people said, why did he do this? Because of the sins of the people. Because they didn't follow him, because they disobeyed, because they gave him the back and the shoulder and not the face. You call my word to be blasphemed. Even when he said, let me kill them all as one man. Why? Because you didn't believe in me. You called my word to be blasphemed. You know what I'm talking about? Don't you realize that that was the sin of Yasharal was blasphemy? That's why that was the accusation on Amashia was blasphemy. So therefore he had to die for blasphemy to atone for the sin of blasphemy that we committed. Don't you understand that every time, that's why Paul told you, everybody that named the name of Amashia, let him depart from iniquity. You know what I'm talking about? If you name the name of Yasharal and say you are that bloodline and you are that seed and you walk contrary to the word, you call this man word to be blasphemed. And that's all we did. He said, from the moment I know you, you've been a stiff neck and rebellious people, meaning you would call people to blaspheme. You know what I'm talking about? Because how they going to sit back and say, that's the power of the Hebrews? You have to sit back and look at that. You sit back and say, I'm a servant of Yahuwah. That's a fat joint that nigga got in his mind. You know what I'm talking about? And they say, he's a servant of Yahuwah. They wife swap. He asked his wife to go down on his second wife. He said, he a servant of Yahuwah. I seen that nigga with a big bottle of Patron. I'm telling you, though, some of y'all know it's Hebrew that will post big bottles of liquor and talk about how they drunk. Dude got mad. He said he was just trying to be funny to get people off his page. Nigga sat back talking about some, he talking about some head would be real good right now. And then he was shocked when people came at him on that. But what did you think people were going to do? If you profess you in the word and you talking about you want some face masks. What do you think will happen? What do you think somebody going to say? I mean, for real though, what do you think somebody going to say? If somebody said they was in the word and they walked up and just came in the room and be like, boy, I sure would like some uh man. some fellatio right now. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> you know what I'm saying? Walking here talking about I need me a woman to slob on my knob. Like, like corn, corn on, on the, the cob. Cob. Stop. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? How would how would you I'm talking about I know it's out at the same time. How would you view this person though? Would you actually take them serious? Kick them out the <laughs> but the thing was is the brother was going off all oh, you self-righteous, hypocritical Hebrew. You just served yourself to be a hypocrite. You say you serve the most high y'all and you talking about some dome and how you want some and you got a cheerleading section telling you it's all right. And you know what that causes people to see these niggas don't care nothing about if this man named it blaspheme. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, flag on the plate. Flag on the plate. You know what I'm saying? Personal foul. Please, Personal man. That's 15 right there, boy. 15 yards. That's <laughs> <laughs> an easy 15. Easy 15. You know what I'm saying? At the same time, think about that, though. Think about if you name yourself after this man. You got to really realize that. They said that was his act, that was his sin, right? With blasphemy, right? <coughs> That's all Yasharat. You gotta remember the reproaches of them that reproach thee fell on me. The blasphemy of them, that blasphemy fell on me. It's okay. Say, hey, it doesn't matter if this your fifth wife. You good. Oh, that was a little lie, man. Ain't a big deal, man. So what you stole his money? Deserve it. You know what I'm saying? So what you punched him in the mouth? I'm for real though. I done seen dudes who say they in this word on blog talks and on Facebook talking about this person live in this state, this person live in this state. They talking about what they gonna do to somebody. I kill you, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Number one, I know you ain't gonna kill nobody. You said it on blog talk or on Facebook. Cause this man come up there, guess what you gonna be? The first suspect. You first dumb suspect it. Number one. Cause I know if I'm gonna kill somebody, I ain't gonna tell him I'm gonna kill him. You just look me in the white of my eyes, and that'll be the last thing you see. 
I mean, if you're going to really kill somebody, I'm going to show tell you about it. Nigga, I'll do this. Nigga, I already know you ain't going to do nothing. It's real. It's, it's easy to be a gangster over a keyboard screen. You know what I'm saying? It's easy to be a gangster over a phone. You know what I'm talking about? Nigga ain't doing nothing but kill a nigga nature. He ain't going to kill nobody. Mommy? Stuff is ridiculous. You know what I'm saying? But you got to realize that everything you do, once you come out and say, I'm going to see the Yasharal. I serve a masha. I live a code lifestyle. I serve you. Anytime you open that out your mouth, then your lifestyle got to be represent, uh, a representation of that. If not, you going to cause this man's name to be blasphemed. Come sit and tell you something. Do you not realize that all this man enemies is sitting back looking for a reading to have something to say? Do you not realize that Doritos made faggot chips? No. They made rainbow chips for the homosexuals. Mm -hmm. I bet not catch Nan, one of Man. you niggas talking about, I want to see how it tastes. Talking <laughs> <laughs> about nigga catch you with a bag of rainbow Doritos. They look flavorful. Yeah, okay. But guess what? Yeah, that is the cutting it. But guess what? It's photo. You going to get it because on the bag it's talking about butt rangers. What is it? Oh, and it's carpet. It's for about... faggots. What, what else would Doritos make some uh, rainbow chips for? Pride. But for rump ranging pride. A collab with Skittles. A collab with Skittles. <laughs> right. let, me, let me hear about you working on that port with them rainbow Doritos. That nigga's talking about a collab with Skittles. I guarantee, because you know what's going to happen. You mess around eat them Doritos, your hand going to start doing this. Oh, man. You know what I'm oh, talking oh, about? Oh, uh, the, the, you know what I'm saying? You're going to start talking with a list. And then the next thing, next thing you know, you're going to be dancing like Young Thug. And you go to dancing like that there, you're no longer my friend. Yeah, Ain't no personal foul. That's automatic ejection. That's a red card. <laughs> That's an automatic ejection. A they say personal foul on number 50. Hitting with the helmet. He has been ejected from the game. Suspended indefinitely. Indefinitely. You've been kicked out the league. Your contract has been terminated. And you got a fine. Ain't no fine. <laughs> Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Why <laughs> does this nigga have a whistle? <laughs> I, ain't just I, ain't just I thought y'all were looking at me. You know, just hold on, man. No, 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 hold on, hold on. No, 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 no. Hey, hey, everybody, hold on, hold on, hold on. Why does this nigga have a whistle? Because when we used to rank and when something don't be funny, <laughs> oh! <laughs> that's what we do. <laughs> So you mean to tell me that's <laughs> even work? Like, yeah, that's what we do in Tally. Like, no, I'm not. That's serious. When stuff don't be funny, be dry, we be like. <laughs> <laughs> you holding the pole? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, no, 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 <laughs> so you got up and carried a whistle. You made it your business every day to leave the house with a whistle. It's on my keychain, man. That's what it is. On my keychain. <laughs> so why are you carrying a whistle? That nigga the ring. It was always on there. And when something okay, 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 okay. We used to rank a lot. When okay, okay, okay. Funny. That's that. You, you've already stated that fact. You know what I'm saying? Why do you have a whistle? <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 you, so, so again, back to my original question. So you bought the whistle for the purpose of doing that as a gag joke? Yeah, it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I ain't mad at you for your attempt. But boy, I would have rolled you like a Bronco bull. Oh. <laughs> 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 You say what you want. Ain't no Paul like really riding you. I'm just saying he like like cause he know he seen me in my prime. He's the only person in here seen me in my prime. Oh yeah. Woo woo. <laughs> <laughs> well, I could have went off that for weeks, possibly months. You know what I'm talking about? Mm. I ain't as sharp as I used to be. 
Boy, in my prime, ooh, woo, I'm talking about jokes from everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. I'm talking about, you talking about between the ages of like 16 to 19, because after a while, we stop. You know what I'm saying? We're just cracking here and there, but we talking about all day, every day. Well, if a nigga would have pulled out a whistle, early morning. Early in the morning, talking about we ranking 6.30 in the morning. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Like, nigga, we just got up 30 minutes ago. Dude, we part ways. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going in, and boy, you would have pulled that whistle out and blew it. In the middle of the session. I'm talking about, I wouldn't care who cracked the joke. I'm going in. If it was dry, the whistle going to be blown. And, and, uh, it's I a guess this. It's a You know, uh, hey, I'm saying, <laughs> check this out. I understand. Check that ranking to a whole nother Okay, check, check me, check me up. I understand the, the premise of having the whistle, doing that. But I'm going to clown on the fact that you possess the whistle. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You carried it. Yeah, they're gonna make you regret that one. They're gonna try. I'm gonna try. I'm going in. You know what I'm saying? Because comedy is good for the soul. That's what they're saying. And boy, I went in. That nigga pulled that whistle out. It'd be any love now. I'd have clowned it. I want to do it right now, but I got work to do. We'll get on that. I got, I, I got word. What's the injury in Crawford? 2 Corinthians 5 to 20. I ain't got time to fool with y'all. I ain't got time to fool with y'all. Oh, 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 I ain't got time to fool with y'all. And then you know what the word part is? You know what the word part is? Hold on, but you know what the word part is, though? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. But you know what the word part is, though? Well, not at FAMU. We're not in Tallahassee. And yet the whistle is still here. We love you, man. Hey, I'm telling you, say this. We love you, man. I'm telling you. I'm gonna tell you something about me, man. I'm a clown. If I don't clown you, that means I don't love you. You know what I'm talking about? So yeah, I'm gonna clown. Hey, and you know the thing I like is, you know what I like about this here though? I'm talking about his perseverance on the fact of that I'm not getting rid of this whistle. <laughs> <laughs> Under no circumstance. I don't care what you niggas say about clowning me by having this whistle. Niggas say a bad joke and I'm blowing the whistle. <laughs> <laughs> he say, he don't like He said, like I said, he doesn't care that I'm a 25-year-old man walking around here with a whistle. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Hey, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm laughing with you. Keep it going. You like you sit there ready to blow the whistle, though. This ain't no joke. Like, I might be smiling. I'm dead serious. 25 year old man walk around here with his whistle. <laughs> I can't do nothing. I can't take y'all nowhere. I'm That was You know what I'm saying? I see right now, I can't take y'all nowhere. I'm going to leave y'all alone. I can't take y'all nowhere. Second Corinthians 5, I can't take y'all nowhere. I'm just still like, all of a sudden, I just hear a whistle being blown. <laughs> not a trumpet. A whistle. That's what I'm thinking about. Yeah, that's what I'm, not, what I'm thinking about is I'm back in elementary school with the patrols and all. You know, they had a whistle. You can't do all this. I hear a whistle being blown. This nigga got a whistle. That's not the call. That nigga. That was the Roman trumpet on the floor. Yes. Uh, this man got a whistle on the keychain. Oh, Boy, y'all have it. <laughs> I'm saying, if we expect Troy to have it, top flight security. Nah, that's all I know like. y'all was going to look at me. I wasn't looking at you. We seen the whistle in it. <laughs> <laughs> that's my first time I've ever seen the whistle. Sure it was. No, it really was. Sure. You got one your gut <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. Why you got a whistle? It's a whistle. It's a rape, but it's got a rape whistle. Okay. What? A rape whistle? No, it's a safety whistle. Like you can hide. Whoa! 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 Oh, Y'all call me. I ain't got time to fool with y'all. That's your man. No way. You heard the sheep that was so. I'm telling you, that's your man. You picked him now. I hope he got that whistle for your protection. Nigga said, "Notice he can't try to go hiking 
I, I know what it's for, uh, man. He just oh, yeah, like okay, okay, yeah, we understand that. I was I was good on that till he said rape whistle, and that just threw me for a complete loop. That's, that's the, that was the, the, the style. Look I'm, I'm gonna tell you, Troy, you should have just kept that one. Up. <laughs> 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 Don't you talk about my own mother. Look, hey, right now, I said it was y'all with the family, right? Y'all with the family? Yeah, family. Don't be trying to put that on. I guess so. I ain't good about that. Hey, we'll tell you, man. Like I said, man, we'll leave that alone. I'm telling you now. I got work to do. And if it's a, I can do quite a few things in my life. And cracking jokes is one of them. I can go all night long. You know what I'm saying? And one thing, and one thing about a comedian, he don't care if you don't like him or not. Cause boy, I Dave Chappelle it around here. I wouldn't care who thought it was funny. I'd die laughing myself. I've done it. You know what I'm talking about? Straight up and down. Then sitting there looking at this nigga dying laughing. Ain't nobody laughing. I don't care. I thought it was funny. I imagine. Second Corinthians 5 and 20. Make it 19. Make it 18, matter of fact. 17 even better. Ooh, Lord. I love y'all. I don't know what we're going to do. I'll make sure we're going to take y'all in public. I don't know. We took y'all in public last week. I don't know if we can do that often. I know we go back to L House. They be like, there go all them niggas again. <laughs> all these women here got their head covered. All these churn. Where all these niggas come from? I don't see no rings. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We got mouse with mouse one there. Mouse ain't want to come eat with us. That's all right. We see how you really feel. We see how you really feel. Saint Corinthians five and seventeen. Therefore, if any man be in a mashiach, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are become new. <laughs> And all things are of Elohim, which have reconciled us to himself by Yahushua HaMashiach, and have given us this ministry of reconciliation. Ain't that's what you see in Leviticus 16 with that goat, was to reconcile you back to him? Him being the goat that the lot fell on? Because he said that one goat for the sin offering is for Yahuwah. To wit, that Elohim was in Hamashiach, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and have committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then we are ambassadors for Hamashiach. As though Elohim did beseech you by us, we pray you in Hamashiach's seed, be ye reconciled to Elohim. That's the whole part of atonement is to reconcile you back with Yah. This is how Hamashiach is our atonement. To make you reconcile back to Yah. That's what the actual word atonement is, is, is meaning. You know what I'm talking about? To bring you back actually means to cover a sin too. And didn't we already read Isaiah 58 something about covering up somebody if they were naked? Mm -hmm. He said, for he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be the righteousness of Elohim in him. So therefore, when he became sin, he became unclean. So we got to take him outside the camp. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Got to purify him. And we know he was purified by the washing. Look at Titus chapter 3. Let's see what purified him. Hey, I'm like this here. I'm so used to having a in my mind like this here used to a water a bottle of water being there to me while I be preaching to wet my palate. <laughs> Not actually, it's just happy. <clears throat> I mean, I drunk a lot of water today, probably about a good gallon. I mean, but I do that every day though. <laughs> Titus chapter three and about verse four. Make it three. He said, for we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But after the kindness and love of Elohim, our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he has saved us by the washing of regeneration and the renew and renewing of the Ruach HaKodesh. <laughs> yeah. mad at you. So that's what purified him then to allow him to be able to come back into camp. We got to sit back and look at that ourselves. Because when we look at the, at the world, look at us, we are called outcasts. 
or the offscoring or the scourge of the world because of the lifestyle that we choose to lead, which is a coded lifestyle before Yahuwah. The world chooses not to do that. But let's go back and look at Isaiah 58 one more time. Matter of fact, let's come over here to Mark chapter 3. Come, let me go ahead and boom. She don't even be that hurt. It just be her pride. Sun just fell on the floor. That's it. Yeah, I know. It just be her pride. Mark 3 and 20. Or 3 and 21. Yeah, hush it up. Hush it up. It'd be a pride. And the multitude come together again so that they could not so much as eat bread. And when his friends heard of it, they went to lay hold on him. For they said he is beside himself. And the scribes which came down from Jerusalem said he had Beelzebub and by the prince of the devils cast he out devils. Because if you go back up and you look at it about verse 11, when the unclean spirits, when they saw him, they fell down before him and cried and said, Thou art the son of Elohim. You know, and he healed a lot of people of plagues and things of this nature. And listen to what he said. He said unto them, and, as he, and he called unto them and said unto them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? Now you're going to turn around and sit back and look at Saul. Saul was adverse against what Yahuwah had told him to do. That's why forth that evil spirit came forth. And tormented him because you were contrary. I will send something contrary to oppress you, to afflict you. You know what I'm saying? What did he say about David? What did Yahuwah say about David? That he only said about one individual in the whole world outside of him. This is a man after my own heart. Therefore, he wasn't contrary. So when you sit back and you look at him casting away this evil spirit from Saul, how can Satan cast out Satan? David wasn't contrary, but Saul was. He said, if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And when you turn around and you look at it at the time, he was translating the kingdom away from Saul to David because at the time the kingdom was divided against itself. It couldn't stand. You actually seen the kingdom fall when it was divided because of the, the sins of Solomon. Therefore, it could not stand because it was divided against itself. They were always going against each other. He said, if Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he cannot stand but have an end. No man can enter to a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he will first bind the strong man, then he will spoil his house. Truly I say unto you, all sins shall be forgiven unto the sons of man, and blasphemies wherewith soever they shall blaspheme. So y'all don't realize all the blasphemy that we committed as a people, those sins were forgiven. Through a martial art, because you gotta realize dead people ought to be dead. He said, I ought to kill them all in one man. You know what I'm saying? He said, but he that shall blaspheme against the Ruach HaKodesh have never forgiveness, but is in danger of eternal damnation because they said he hath an unclean spirit. Now, them people said that he was doing, the, he had the Ruach HaKodesh, and they said the spirit, because then we just read in 2 Corinthians 5, it said that Elohim was in him. See, that's what sometimes people don't realize, bro. That's why I be telling you, man, you see somebody, and, and, and you perceive them to be a man of the most high, but why would you say out your mouth? Because that man say, well, they said he had an unclean spirit. That man say, well, you just blasphemed against the spirit. You going to hell. You know what I'm talking about? That's serious right there. And you know a lot of dudes be real loose with their mouth. I ain't just talking about nobody. But I'm talking about people be real loose with their mouth. You know what I'm saying? I think I said that to somebody. Oh, I said that to Candace yesterday when we was in the uh, gym with D. She didn't know what that meant. You know what I'm saying? I hope y'all in here know what that means. Y'all know what that means. Talk real greasy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Talk real tough. <coughs> real slick. Like you make something happen. Absolutely. Nigga, knock your whole face off. You know what I'm saying? That's how y'all look at it. Remember, he said that in the law, man. Israelitish dude, you know what I'm saying? Old mixed baby. We're talking greasy. You know what I'm talking about? Y'all killed him on the spot. You go read about him in Deuteronomy 22 or 23. Kill him on the spot. Half bread. Oh, half breed nigga. Like oh, mulatto. Mm -hmm. <laughs> talking crazy. You know what I'm saying? I didn't say that, but he was talking crazy. His mama was from the tribe of Dan. What? He was like and he looking at you like he was a mulatto. Yeah. Say, nigga, I'm all black. Yeah, he's looking at me. That's what I'm talking about. He's both telling him I'm all black. Yeah. 
Spanish. Ain't no such thing as Spanish. They said that's the white man name. Exactly. Uh, I ain't catch the truth. You speak when you ask that Negro. Exactly. Huh? Anybody in here feel like they're a mulatto? I'm like Irish in my blood. Get your shamrock eating behind the back. <laughs> 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 oh, that was quick. <laughs> 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 Come on. We ain't talking about no last name. I mean, come on, your last name don't mean nothing. That didn't mean whoever owned you was Irish. Great, 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 possibly great granddad on my grandma's side was a Catholic, was an Irish Catholic, some Irish priest, something like that. Oh, you really need to go. <laughs> I mean, you down with Francis now. Uh, you know, you, know, you, know, you mind being a slave with me? Woo! Matthew chapter 8. Boy. <laughs> Matthew 8 and 47. <laughs> Uh, everybody don't feel like that though you got some people right now if they found if they were to find out that they were not a natural born uh of the seed of Yasharal, that they would put this book down seriously it's quite a few that's why some of them the so-called ones that are latino that because of that chart is quote unquote let them in that's why they defend it so hard they don't even sit back and look at it as the stranger or so shall so shall you be. You know what I'm saying? So it doesn't even really matter. As long as you circumcise your heart and you live a upright and clean life and you have faith in a mashak as the scripture has said. You know, knowing you knowing that you are ya having a Yahudin vantage only counts for one thing. The oracles of Allahim were given unto your fathers. That's your advantage. The word come to you first. You know what I'm saying? Everything come to you first. That's your advantage. You know what I'm talking about? Your advantage means absolutely nothing if you don't adhere to it. You know what I'm saying? It's worthless. Worthless. I mean, y'all need to sit back. How many of y'all, for more a lot of time, you just were boasting in your flesh? They're basically boasting that you knew who you was. You know what I'm saying? And we know pride lead to hell. That man say that Allahim resisted the proud and gave grace unto the humble. That's why a lot of our people not going to make it. You know what I'm saying? That pride in knowing who you are is a good thing because then it allows you to look at the standard that you're supposed to uphold and keep. You know what I'm talking about? But if you're just proud of, I'm an Israelite, I'm a Hebrew, that means absolutely nothing. So what? These white people run around here and say they're Anglo-Saxon and this, that, that, and the other. Look how they act. You know what I'm talking about? Look at them. I'm an Indian. I'm a Choctaw. Nigga, drunk as the day is long. I thought a Saxon was gay. I thought an Anglo Saxon was gay. I mean, that's what they call themselves. Hey, man, I'm not going to talk about those Anglo Saxons right now. You know their history. Some of y'all done read it. Ain't that something? They made a movie called Dancing with Wolves, a grown man in the woods with some dogs. <laughs> <laughs> A grown man in the woods with some dogs. I mean, that's what the movie was about. I mean, that movie came out before some of y'all were even born. That's a Kevin Costner movie, which says a lot. You know what I'm talking about? Dancing with wolves. You know what I'm talking about? Dancing with wolves. Why am I dancing with a canine? A dangerous canine at that, and he got him by the paw. <laughs> You don't want to see it. And not because that I'm saying that it's a grown man in the wolves with dogs, because it's a horrible piece of cinema. You know, like our movie. Exactly. There's actually not an adjective to describe how bad that movie is. All right, so we're better than that. No, I'm talking about yours. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Was it because he didn't have the same resource that Kevin I don't care if you get the whistle or not, they're gonna change the fact that moved them seven. I'm still upset about the seven minutes and 38 seconds of my life that I lost. I can't get that back. I can't get it back. I wanted to get my full attention to this. You can say what you, of course you're not gonna say it's that bad because you were in it. Would it have been better if we wouldn't have had our Islam rags on? 
It would have been better if it wasn't made. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. <clears throat> and I'm telling you why it wasn't because the dialogue was poor. And it's just the simple fact that you're saying because really what it is is y'all went and did something. You didn't really take no thought in what you were doing. You know what I'm talking about? And you just went and did it. It was better than Brokeback Mountain. <laughs> Man, what? <laughs> <laughs> Hell, bro. That is not. That nigga told us that. That nigga told I've never I'm seen Brokeback Mountain, exactly. so I can't speak on it. I know the movie is about a sissy, but but I know the movie was made by Clint Eastwood, which means the script and the dialogue probably was good. Because he's not a bad director. It probably wasn't much talking. A lot of groaning, though. All then. But I'm sitting there y'all think I'm trying to be funny. You know what I'm saying? I ain't trying to be funny, though. I'm, I'm being serious now. Like, you said, the dialogue was atrocious. You know what I'm saying? It was bad. You know what I'm saying? Because you could tell that y'all were just boom. Like, there, there was no rhyme or reason. It wasn't it was no rhyme or reason to the setup. Like, we got to get right, bro. Bible study, 6.30. It's like there's nothing in the dialogue that would have convinced... Very dry. Yeah, to convince very somebody dry. that this is believable, like you're really trying to express something. It was like a dry comedy. Was it a script? Was it a script? Yeah, that's what they said. Oh, I forgot about that part. 400. 400. 400. Yeah. Heavy bab. That's what it called. What it called? Heavy bab. And you know what the Babs for? Not Babylon, but Babbage. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> I wasn't prepared. Well, that nigga was wrong. 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 That Just said, fuck getting big. Hey, man, look at that. I'm going to tell you something, right? Because I can be real with myself. If I was in something and it was bad, I'd tell you, boy, yeah, we made a movie, boy. It was. It was rough. I feel like for the first time, you know, we gave her all. And it wasn't enough. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I know the tapes don't even exist. It's some tape. Like this here, right? I'll be honest with you. He can rap now. But when we were young, boy, that was so tough. You know what I'm talking about? And we used to tell him, too. Oh, man. It's a couple of tastes where we rapping with him. Boy, that stuff was horrible. I'm talking about, I, <laughs> I hope to God it don't never come back. Like, this nigga gonna be shut in that chair. What is that? You know what I'm saying? I'm a father. I ain't got, who knows what that? What you doing? I'm talking about, what? All of us just in the room. Just ride. You know what I mean? But see, the thing is, oh, 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 oh. now my mouth's doing all this here. Oh, oh, oh. But one thing about it, mouth. At least I can run, Mouth. At least I can. Hey, but I can't let what she did. I can run, though. Mouth can't run. I'm not taking her. She's about she to jump in front of him. Because yeah. 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 I'm telling you. Hey, I'm going to tell you something, though, man. I'm, I'm talking about serious. I'm talking about I'm telling you now. I used to tell my homeboy, boy, they'd come rap. Man, I had a homeboy who used to rap. And that nigga would make up words that didn't exist. Oh <laughs> and I tell him, boy, that was God. You know what I'm talking about? See, y'all be, see, you know what y'all problem is? You sit there and listen to your homeboy write a garbage verse and tell him, boy, that was him. See, I'm going to look you in your face and I'm going to tell you, that sucked. That metaphor was bad. Your flow was horrible. What in the world were you talking about? I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to tell you the truth because I love you. Because when you talk about putting something out there, you talk about making raps, making movies, putting something out there for mass consumption. I ain't got to go nowhere. <laughs> I mean, back then, nigga, just would do because I wasn't no rapper. Nigga just say, you know what I'm talking about? Get on there with me. That was around the time my homeboy was locked up. 
Rodney was doing that time for that. But see, that nigga wanted to ride. He got better over the year, though. Oh, man. I got some homeboys that ain't get no better. Uh-oh. Still trash. You know what I'm talking about? Uh-huh. Boy, you breathing hard? You all right? Yeah, he trying to get himself good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about today. Hey, I'm going to tell you, y'all been waiting till y'all I see Corey Park. Corey, boy. Oh, no, Corey Park. You see Corey Park. Corey got about 45 cents. Corey was smooth as fuck, though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Corey had a smooth as fuck. It was. Because he came in like Machelski. He didn't come in like Machelski. Wait till y'all see Troy, though. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> wait till y'all see. But wait till y'all see Troy though. Go, I seen Troy and he got the booty face in there like he got nothing. And we, we shot it on camera, so it was just something. The quality was not the issue. The quality of the film work was not the issue. Man, look here, man. The quality of the film was not the issue. It ain't, it ain't, it ain't the vision. All of it. It's not the vision. <laughs> it's not the visual. It was the actor. You know what I'm saying? It's not the actor. It's not the actor. The movie was bad. Where's part two? I ain't no skate passer because if I start, I don't want to ride on Mouse right now. I'm saying because she done opened the door. She done fired off a shot. Now, if I load my clip up. <laughs> that was almost nuclear warfare. Ain't no nuclear warfare. So one thing about it, just what the death count was. See, now, see, I, see, I gotta let her, I gotta let her live, cause I know they sensitive. Cause I can go, I don't want to do like that. You're not a man, you're a woman. You know what I'm saying? So, so you could get you could go on and get your one. Because if we go, Miles gonna be mad and we don't want to make him mad. I mean you, it, it, and it's all well and good. Hey, all that coast trying to get you. Yeah, I'm telling you, because I'm t- <laughs> one thing about it, well, let me tell you something. You can look crazy all you want to. That don't mean nothing, because you can get it too. You can get it too. No, this the part. No, this the part. And nobody to a roll session. You know what I'm saying? But I got work to do. I ain't got time for that. I got time for that. See, that's what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? We got time for that. But it's all right, though. D, who got part two, though? Because I want everybody wants to see it because we love y'all. They can make their own determination. You got it recorded somewhere. I can check my iPad and see if I got it. Uh Uh-oh. Okay. (laughs) Matthew 8 and 28. (laughs) All right, then. I see you. I see you. Matthew 8, He said, when he would come to the other side, <clears throat> into the country of Gergazim, there met him two possessed with devils coming out of the tombs, exceeding fierce, so that no man might pass by that way. And behold, they cried out, saying, what have we to do with thee, Yahushua, son of Elohim, thou son of Elohim? Art thou come hither to torment us before the time? And there was a good way off from them a herd of many swine feeding. So the devils besought him, saying, If thou cast us out, suffer us to go away into the herd of the swine. And he said unto them, Go. And when they were come out, they went into the herd of swine. And behold, the whole herd of swine ran violently down a steep place into the sea and perished in the waters. And they that kept them fled and went their ways into the city and told everything what would befall unto them to who possessed of the devil. You notice he told him to go and all the other places when he told him to go because his words are as a hawk. Maybe he said that a Mashiach is as a hind, that Naphtali is a hind let loose who give goodly words. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, and, and you know what the word, the name Naphtali means? It means to prevail. You got to realize when the word dwell in you, then you have prevailed. What allowed a Mashiach to prevail? Because he was the word. His adherence, his belief, his obedience to the word is what caused him to overcome and to prevail. What allowed that unclean spirit to come out of Saul? Because David had prevailed. He said, I found a man better than you. No. Just a side note, I've heard a Christian break this verse down and say when he sent that spirit into the uh, herd of swine and 
The swine had to went into the water. She's like, see, that's how you know pork is not there for a queen. Because it got cleaned by that water. So I'm like, oh my goodness. I mean, yeah, that really makes sense. They then in there to die. Mm -hmm. An unclean spirit has to go into an unclean beast. To die. To die. See, that's the cleansing of it. But sit back and sit and look at it, though. An unclean yeah. spirit went into an unclean beast. And ask to go into a unclean beast. <clears throat> yeah, that's like that'll go. That's what I'm saying. That's yeah, like, yeah, but what I'm trying to get y'all to understand is, in Ezekiel, he said that your words are like somebody who plays well on an instrument. That's what he compared his words to. You see David playing an instrument to get an unclean spirit from tormenting Saul, which is what you see here. How about she ask, speak the word, go. He played the instrument. You know what I'm talking about? Let's go back and look at the other thing with 1 Samuel 16. Let me read you Hebrews 3 first. We have about two. I got plenty of time. Because we got to finish Isaiah 58, what that is, with that atonement. The whole kid and caboodle. Then we can roll. Hebrews 3 and 1. <clears throat> Say, wherefore, Kodesh brethren, partakers of the, the calling of the Shamahim, Consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Yahushua HaMashiach, who was faithful to him that appointed him, as also Moses was faithful in all his house. For this man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses, inasmuch as he who had built the house hath more honor than the house. For every house is built by some man, but he that built all things is Elohim. Moses truly was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which would be spoken after. But Amashiach has a son over his own house, whose house are we, if we hold fast to confidence and rejoicing of the hope firm to the end. What did it say that the high priest, when he went in to make an offering, who he had to make it for? Himself. And who else? The people. And who else? The house. It's not what it said. The house. It said to make an offering for him and his house. Ain't that what Leviticus 16 said? That he'd had to make the offer. Go on, let's go back and look at the people looking at me blank. You got to sit back and understand that. That man, so he, he's showing you for, he said, I'm not sent but unto the who? Lost sheep of the house of Yasharai. He said, this word was sent unto you first. Get your Acts chapter 3 along with Leviticus 16. Look at Acts, uh, Leviticus 16, what verse 8 say? Matter of fact, make it about verse, uh, yeah, about verse 8, more than likely. Actually, verse 6 is what I want. It say, Aaron shall offer his bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself, and make atonement for himself and for his house. It just told you, Hamashiach, he said, which house we are. So when he come up on that tree to make that sacrifice, he was not only making atonement for himself, but for us as well. Let's look at Acts 3. Get your Acts 5 and 28 along with it. Acts 3 and 18. For those things which Elohim before had showed by the mouth of all his prophets, that a Mashiach should suffer, he has so fulfilled. Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. How else your sins going to be blotted out but by the atonement? That the high priest got to make for himself and for his heart. That when the times of, ref uh, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the master, and he shall send Yahushua HaMashiach, which was before was preached unto you whom the Shamahim must receive until the times of restitution of all things, which Elohim has spoken by the mouth of his Kodesh, all his Kodesh prophets, since the world began. For Moses truly said unto the fathers, a prophet shall Yahuwah your Elohim raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me. Him shall you hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. And didn't Moses seek to make an atonement of the sins of the people by offering himself? Remember, he said Moses was a man faithful over all his house. And he went to, to make himself an atonement for not only himself, but for his house. 
And it shall come to pass that every soul which shall not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. Yea, and all the prophets from Samuel and those that follow after, as many as have spoken, have likewise foretold of these days. Ye are the sons of the prophets and of the covenant which Allah made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham, In thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. Under to you first, Allah, having raised up his son, Yahushua, sent him to bless you, and turning away every one of you from his iniquity. That was the purpose of atonement was to turn you away from your sin that you would no longer commit. But see, what did people, but the writer of Hebrew told you that it was not possible for the blood of bulls and goats to purge away sin because if it were, there would be no need every year to come back and do it. You know what I'm talking about? So when a Mashiach come back, because obviously you say, if the blood of a Mashiach sprinkled to the unclean, say, if, uh, if the sprinkling of the ashes of a heifer to the unclean, how much more should the blood of a Mashiach who offered himself without spot purge your conscience from dead works? You know what I'm talking about? So this man showing you how to ease the atonement. You know what I'm talking about? Because now what that atonement couldn't do from turning you away from your iniquities, he is dead. This is why they come telling you to ask for forgiveness when in actuality they got you blaspheming. They got you doing the opposite. Because we already know our law say don't bear no grudge against thy neighbor. Don't avenge or bear no grudge. So that means you are already supposed to forgive your neighbor anyway. Because the master already told you Luke 17 and 1, he said offenses must come. But war unto them the offenses must come. He said if your brother sin against you seven times in one day, say forget it. All you got to go do back is look at David and Saul. Saul sinned against David over and over again, and he forgave him. Laban sinned against Jacob over and over again. He forgave him. Esau sinned against Jacob. He forgave him. Every single time. Look at all the people who sinned against David. He forgave every last one of them. Some of them did it multiple times. You know what I'm saying? So this is where that come from. It's mainly specifically with Saul and David when he said, if your brother trespassed against him, Saul trespassed against this man many times and David showed mercy on him several times when he could have killed him. You know what I'm saying? Oh, we got We good on that. Come on back over here to 1 Samuel 16. We knock this on that. Before we swing it down to Isaiah 58 and call it the evening. Now I want you to look at how they describe David. And about verse 18, look how he described David. He said, there answered one of the servants, this is verse 18, and said, behold, I've seen a son of Jesse the Bethlehemite that is cunning and plain. You know, Hamashiach, what, what did he say in Matthew 13 and 52? What? What did he say in Matthew 13 52? What did the Mashiach tell his apostles in Matthew 13, 52? Uh, he, says, he said, every scribe which is instructed into the kingdom of Shamahim, as is a man who is a householder, which means that they would be skillful. Because he said if they're skillful in playing, then they would know how to manifest the word. See, look at uh, Titus chapter 1. Remember, we dealt with the playing the instrument that's dealing with the word. He said this man would be skillful. Then get you Matthew 7 and about 22. Look at Titus chapter 1 and about verse 6. He said, if any be blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children, not accused of right or unruly, for a bishop must be blameless as the steward of Elohim, not self-willed, not soon angry, not given to wine, no striker, not given, given to filthy lucre, but a lover of hospitality, a lover of good men, sober, just, kodesh, temperate, holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught that he may be able by sound doctrine to both exhort and to convince the gainsayers. Now, if you look at it, my shot was chief bishop and shepherd, right? He said that the doctrine, he said, the doctrine that I teach is not mine, but he is that sent me. 
Look at Matthew 7, 22, and look what the people said about the preaching or the teaching that he brought for them. Because it said that this man was skillful in playing. Remember it said that Yahushua was the <coughs> chief apostle of all. You know what I'm talking about? Would mean he had to be skillful. You should know he was skillful because what did he do after his resurrection? He sat down and taught the men how the whole book was about him. Look at Matthew 7 and 28, actually. It said, And it came to pass when Yahushua had ended these things, the people were astonished at his doctrine or at his teaching. For he taught them as one having authority and not as described. You don't know the way you're going to be, be able to speak with authority. And number one, you got the authority. And number two, you know what you're talking about. Because he said, for where the word is. Remember, we dealt with this here. Where the word of the king is, there's what? Power. And the kingdom of Elohim is not in word, but in power. You know what I'm talking about? So every time a Mashiach went in and spoke the word to these people, he was showing he was skillful in plain. He was skillful in the word, which the first thing should take you back to is Ezra, a ready scribe. I mean, he was skillful. Because what did Ezra cause, cause the people to do? To understand what he was bringing forth to them, right? And what did Amashiach did? He said that he opened their understanding that they might understand the scripture because he was skillful in plan. Because the preacher was wise, he sought out knowledge to teach the people acceptable words, even words that are upright, even words of truth, because he was skillful in plan. Come on back to first sentence. It's real simple. How do they be missing all this stuff, man? Dang it. Then it said, look at verse the next thing it says. He is a mighty valiant man, a man of war, prudent in matters, and a comely person, and Yahoo is with him. Now you know what that means if you're a valiant man. What does it mean to be a valiant man, Troy? I'm gonna tell you. What it mean to be a valiant man, Court? Strong. Strong man. Strong man. Look at Romans 15 and 1. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so guess what that means? We got to turn around and be, be valiant men for the truth. Stand for the truth and strength. As, as Apostle Yachanan said or John said what? He say not only in word, but in deed and in truth. He say when the, we that are, then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. For even a Mashiach pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproach thee fell on me. Wouldn't it make sense? He said uh, the, that, that lot, because he said the reproaches of them fell, that fell on thee fell on me. You the lot. You Yahuwah's lot. You Yah's lot. I'm going to use you to offer it because you're strong enough to take it. You know what I'm saying? When you sit back and you look at all the tribulations and suffering David went through, he chose David for that because he a man after my own heart. He's strong enough to take it. You know what I'm talking about? I know you can take that. He knew that we were weak. We didn't read that the other day. We read it. Matter of fact, we read it on Shabbat. He said he know of our frame that we are dust. You know what I'm saying? That's why Paul said when we are weak, Yet we are strong. You know what I'm saying? Through a mighty and valiant man, he said, my grace is sufficient for thee because my strength is made perfect in weakness because he was a valiant man. Took a lot to go through that. That's real strength to take all that on and you didn't do nothing because he put his trust in him that judges righteously to make the atonement. He said, by, our strife, by his stripes, you are healed. You know what I'm talking about? Because he was the atonement. He took that on. That made him a valiant man. He said he was prudent in matters, meaning he was wise, meaning he was discreet. Hamashiach was discreet in all things that he did. You know he a man of war. Number one, you looking at a man of war, he got the victory over sin in that battle. See, that's what you sitting back looking at because the first thing we're going to look at is him coming back and killing all these people. When you're not looking at what Romans 6 say, our battle, he say we fight not against flesh and blood, but principalities. Spiritual darkness in high places. He came and fought a battle which no even remember what he, look at Ecclesiastes chapter eight. Cause he said he was a man of war. Look at Ecclesiastes chapter eight, verse seven. Well, 
make it eight. My apologies. Please ask these eight and eight. He said, there is no man that have power over the spirit to retain the spirit. Neither have he power in the day of death. And there is no discharge in that war. Neither shall the wicked deliver those that are given unto it. That man said that if you know if there's discharge, I mean, there's no release. He says there's nobody has any power to retain the spirit and nobody has any power to defeat them. Well, let's look at John chapter 10, verse 17. Let's see what Amashah say. That means if you don't have no power to retain the spirit, it means you can't keep it. You got to remember before Amashah came, nobody had power to retain the spirit. It was no, it wasn't even that there. It wasn't a continual indwelling. It wasn't a permanent indwelling. It was temporary. It's only one man you read in the word where the spirit came on him and you don't read it coming off him. No. What was the question said again? There's only one person that you'll read in the word that the spirit came on them and it you don't read where it came off of them. Was it Moses? No. Mm -hmm. Jim Dan? Before him, before Hamashah, there's only one person in this word where you read the spirit came on them and it did not come off of them. You just read about him about five minutes ago. It was David. In that same chapter of 1 Samuel 16. It's right there because you got to remember it's the similitude of Hamashah. He is our offspring and the root of David. So it makes sense to own, because if you read anybody else about the spirit coming on them, you read about it coming off them too. But you don't read that for David. Only because it's a similitude of a martial. You know what I'm saying? Because you got to remember, when he also, he talking about, about it, nobody has the power to retain the spirit. Because you know, when you die, what happened? The spirit or the breath of life that is in you go back to him that gave it. That's what Ecclesiastes 12 say, right? But let's see what Amasha I say right here in 10 and 17. Then get you John chapter 5 about verse 25. And then after that, get you Romans chapter 8 about verse 9. Therefore, doth my father love me because I lay down my life that I might take it again. No man take it from me, but I lay it down of myself. You know what I'm talking about? I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my father. So this man telling you, I have power to retain the spirit. And I have power to defeat that battle, that war between. He said no man has any power in to discharge that battle, right? But he just told you he did, though. You know, we done dealt with this in the past. Look, look at John 5, 25. Look what he said. Make it 24. Truly, truly, I say unto you, he that hear my word, and believe on him that sent me have everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Truly, truly, I say unto you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the son of Elohim and they that hear shall live. That's the same thing we were talking about Trump. They listening for a ram's horn. They ain't going to hear that trumpet. We mean, they ain't going to get up. Remember, he said, cry aloud, lift up your voice like a trumpet. And it's amazing. You see him when he called out for Lazarus, he cried out. That mean his voice sounded like a trumpet. It ain't going to sound like no ram's horn. For as the father have life in himself, so have he given the son to have life in himself. And he have given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the son of man. Just like you look in verse 21, he say the son quicken whom he will, which means he make alive whom he will. So that means you have power to retain the spirit and to discharge death. Through him, through that atonement. Romans 8 and 8. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please Elohim. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be that the spirit of Elohim dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Amashiach, he is none of his. And if Amashiach be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. So that means you would have power in that, in that battle. What did Paul say? He said, man, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? O wretched man that I am. He said, but I give thanks unto Elohim 
that through Yahushua HaMashiach we have obtained a victory. You know, when you talk about victory, you're talking about a battle. He went to war with death and beat it. Because Solomon had told you there is no discharge in that battle. Ain't that what he said? That means nobody can't win that. Somebody had to come and win it. He said, great is the misery of man upon him because he know a man going to die and return back to dust. So somebody got to come and make that victory. It said he was a man of war. Why do you think Paul would turn around and tell you our battle is not with flesh and blood and to put on the whole armor of Elohim? And this man didn't put on the whole armor of the Most High to fight that battle to defeat death and sin that you might live. Say he was a comely person, you know that's beauty, right? Because you know they say they, they try to say a mashal early because of Isaiah 53. They say there was no comeliness in him that we would desire him. So they were like, see, a mashal ugly. How many of y'all have heard that before? They ain't got nothing to do with that. When it just said it would come, the beauty of Kodesh wasn't comely to them, so therefore they didn't desire him. They desired a murderer instead. They said the people didn't desire him. They said they desired a murder. Peter told you that. He said you desired a murder to be delivered unto you because the beauty of Kodesh was not comely to them. His righteousness was not beautiful to them. Sin was beautiful to them. Give me that. Had nothing to do with his physical appearance. Absolutely not. The book don't even tell you what his physical appearance looked like other than he was brown skinned and hair looked like wool. Didn't tell you what his face looked like. If you know he come from the seed of David and it said David had a beautiful countenance, what made you think he'll come from a... Then you turn around and saying his father ugly if he come in the image of his father. He's saying y'all ugly. <laughs> but they say it every day. His dudes out here see a mashal were ugly. I done heard a dude say he was five. He was a short man with an underdeveloped beard. Where did you get that from? What? He's a leprechaun? What is he? <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm serious, though. There's people that say that. I've heard that before. That he was a short man with an underdeveloped beard. Or they say he was dark skin and plain look. Like, where you get all this from? It don't tell you what his physical face looked like. But if you understand that the words say he is the beauty of Kodesh and to worship him in the beauty of Kodesh, then you would have to believe that he is beautiful. You would have to believe that. If you wasn't, you stupid. You know what I'm talking about? If he come in the express image of his father, then that means if the father beautiful and he is the beauty of Kodesh, his son got to be too. You know, people say that's what I mean. Like something small is saying, oh, my shock ugly. You going to hell, you blaspheme. Not that you blasphemed the Ruach HaKodesh, but you, you spoke against y'all. You said, I'm ugly. Who would be bold enough to look the father in the face and say, you know what? You kind of ugly, man. Show me. Huh? Nobody that bold. Ain't nobody that bold. Because, boy, if you were standing before y'all, you ain't going to do nothing. You're going to be trying to pick your jaw up off the ground. You're probably going to be too terrified to even move. Might have been unsoiled yourself a few times. I mean, you gotta sit back and realize that boy, when, when, when Paul seen the vision of Mashiach on the way to Damascus, he was terrified. You would have no, like this here, you're gonna be stuck like, what? Like, this ain't something you see every day. How many people walk up and see, yeah, boy, I was walking down the street, boy, I happened to see the Mashiach, boy, right in the sky. He was talking to me and all, boy, you know, I talked to him about 20 minutes, then I had to, I had to go, I had to hit Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> Like you talking to him like that's a regular person you see every day. That's not a thing you see every day. You know what I'm talking about? You see that, you're going to remember it. Daniel seen a, 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 a Malachim and was terrified. He had to touch the man and say, get up, man, don't be scared. He said all the strength went out of his body. He on the ground limp. Yeah, I'm serious. That word said that man was on the ground limp. Man, the thing said he had to come to him and touch him. Get up and get your strength back. He like this here, man, what in the blue blaze? Wow. <laughs> Don't fell out. Great balls. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm for real though. Listen. Yeah. I ain't catching all this. I'm I'm being serious though. Dude be talking about, if I see a demon, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. Nigga, be, yeah, nigga, please. You're going to be like this here. 
shaking. It said Daniel said when he seen the Malachim, he was shaking and trembling. And this man was to help him. He was to come give him information. This man like this here. This I don't know what's going on, boy. I don't know what this is. This is not cool, man. This is not cool. You know what I'm talking about? So dude, just be talking, man. Verse 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Yahushua from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up a Mashiach from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwell in you. So this is the only way you're going to have power to discharge death and win this battle. Because remember what Amasha told the disciple. He said, be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. I've already won the battle. I already, I'm a man of war. And Yah is with me. Because I dwell in him and he dwell in me. You know, I seen some brothers say something the other day. Talking about your kid don't even know the Lord's prayer. I ain't even sit there and tell him, man. Matthew chapter 6 ain't even that man's prayer. He told you, this is how you pray to the, he said, how do we pray to the Father? He said, do this. He didn't say that was my prayer. He was telling them, he said, teach us how to pray. And that's what he said. He told them that. But when he got ready to die, he made his prayer, his prayer for us to dwell in him. So we can dwell in the Father. He said, I done gave him that word. The world done hated him. You know what I'm talking about? He said, Father, make them perfect and one as we are. Cold as Father, the world have not known thee. He said, man, give me the glory that I had with you. That be, ain't he not making supplication unto his Father? So wouldn't that be his prayer? This, way he this is what he's asking for. He wasn't asking for nothing in Matthew chapter 6. He said, he say, man, you want to pray? Then what you do? All you got to do is go look at 1 Chronicles chapter 29 and you'll see where he got it from. Straight up. You know what I'm talking about? Man, look here. Look, mother might not remember. Man, I've been showing people for four or five years that Matthew chapter 6 come from 1 Chronicle 29. David said the same thing word for word. Word for words. You know what I'm talking about? He did, where anywhere in Matthew chapter 6 did Amashiach ask for anything? He didn't ask for anything one time. When you make prayer supplication, you're asking for something. You know what I'm talking about? You're making petition under Yah. Oh, you're not. Did he ask for anything in Matthew chapter 6? That wasn't in prayer then. In the least bit. I mean, man, by the grace of y'all, not today, we could go from verse 1 all the way to verse 26, and you can see where it's written that he about these things to him, and that's why he asked for them. And that's why he asked for them. That man said, give me the glory that I had with you before the world war. He had man raised me from the dead and set me back where I was at. He said, all you gave me, I ain't lost none. He said, all things are mine or thine. Take you right back to Abraham and Isaac. Father gave everything to his son. Come back, do the same thing. Then what I'm asking for. Can you give that back to me? Can you take these? He said, hey, sanctify them by thy truth. Thy word is truth. Then what are you asking him for? He said, I sanctify myself by the truth that they might be saying, I'm asking for this. Like this here, you niggas running around here, your kid don't know the Lord prayer. They teaching them the wrong thing. And to get mad at you if you tell him that's not his prayer. I started to tell dude that, but I knew he was a douchebag, so I left him alone. I'm dead serious. I knew that it wasn't going to go well. Because he was going to kick, scream, and fight. You know what I'm talking about? What's the point of that? You got to realize, even right now, we get, if we fasting and you go to set yourself to prayer, you asking for something. Don't you realize that he sit back and look at if he's making that supplication, right? He said, is this not a fast I have chosen that your voice may be heard on high? Was he fasting in Matthew chapter 6? Was he afflicting his soul in Matthew chapter 6? Was he not afflicting his soul in John chapter 17? Was he not going, getting ready to go through a fast that he had, that y'all had chosen? Because he was the, the guilt that was Yahuwah's lot for the sin offering? It only made sense. Niggas just retarded. Isaiah 15. After you look at Isaiah 58, go get your uh, Luke chapter 4 about verse 16. We already dealt with him dealing with his bread to the hungry, right? So now we got to sit back and look at bringing the poor or the humble that's cast out of your house. 
And then when he saw the naked to cover him, that he don't hide himself from his own flesh. And then we're going to have to look at him loosen the bands of wickedness and undo the heavy burdens to let the oppressed go free to break every yoke. To break every yoke. So let's look at the first thing about letting the oppressed go free in Luke chapter 4 by verse 16. Let's see what he say about himself. Y'all know what Ecclesiastes say about the oppressed, right? He said, truly oppression make a wise man mad. Luke 4 and about 16. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up as his custom was, and he went on to, into the synagogue on the Shabbat day and stood up for the read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. When he opened the book, he found a place written therein, the spirit of Yahuwah is upon me because he have anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, to recovering of the sight of the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of Yahuwah. So how would he let the oppressed go free if he said that that scripture in Isaiah 61, which he quoted, is about me, to let the oppressed go free? Huh? Free from all the elements of the world. Ain't that what he came to do? He said, you shall know the truth and the what? Set you free. So what would you be free from? You'd be free from that discharge of the battle of death. You'd be free from it what? if you just dwell in it. Not only that, come over here to 1 Peter chapter 3. Why you think, remember when we were looking at that, what Peter told you, don't use your liberty as a cloak of maliciousness. You know what I'm saying? We've been set free. You know, I already know that I told you in 2 Corinthians 3 and about verse 16, Paul told you where the spirit of the master is, where the spirit of Yahushua is, there is liberty, there is freedom. So if there's freedom, there's discharge in that war. That means he came to do exactly what he came to do. And if you want to look at that oppressed going free, I'm going to show it to you again. Just give me a second. 1 Peter chapter 3 by verse 17. He say, For Amashiach also have once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to Allahim, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened in the spirit. By which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison, which sometimes were disobedient, when once the long suffering Elohim waited in the days of Noah while the ark was preparing, wherein few that is, eight souls were saved by water. Now he said he'll let the oppressed go free. Did a shot let the oppressed go free? When he did it. What you say, Jim Dandy? At Matthew chapter 27, what happened? Don't know what happened in Matthew chapter 27? When the people rolled from the dead, he let the oppressed go free. Because then they come out from the grave, and they were oppressed by death. He set them free. Didn't he let the oppressed go free? Did he not undo the heavy burden and the yoke? Death no longer had dominion over them. Y'all already know what Matthew 11 say. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give thee rest. You know what I'm talking about? That's what he came to do, to remove all. That's what all this fast is about. That's why he say, suffer in the flesh that you no longer live to the will of men, but to the will of the Most High. That's what he came to do. He said, this is an acceptable fast which I have chosen. I have chosen this day for this man to suffer. I have chosen this day for this man to be afflicted. When they came to give him the vinegar, he wouldn't drink it. You know what I'm talking about? Ain't had no bread. No, I'm afflicted in every shape, form, or fashion. You know what I'm talking about? Even the even. The only time you read another spot when he took that water and went after he had done caused the light to come up again. Remember, he made it go dark from what? From the ninth hour to the sixth hour. Oh, for we would say from noon to three, right? Then he made it come light again. Say what? That man ain't dropped you. Ain't nobody dropped you. You've been dropped. Dropped. But you understand what I'm saying? Now look at the other thing he say, right? He let the oppressed go free. He broke every yoke. How did he bring the poor out of his house that were cast out? How did he bring the poor to his house that were cast out? The man that was 
one of the men that was like the next one was a thief, right? Mm, when we look at poor, he was a thief. You know, poor being and humble. And you got to use that as an example. He said, this day, you, he said, what did he tell that dude when he was talking to Trey? He said, do you not fear the most high? But when you sit back looking at the being the poor cast out of his house, you try to turn around and we look at that atonement, what will we end up doing when the Mashiach returns? What house will we cast out of? Will we not cast out of our husband's house because of our disobedience? Because of his atonement, will that not bring back? He said, blessed are the meat because they'll inherit the earth. What I just already told you, rats or earth means land or soil. It'll take you right back to the land of Yasharai from whence we depart. He said, the same land you left from is the same land you're going back to. So him being able to atone, to atone for your sins allows you to be able to come back to the house from which you left at. And you should already know how he covered the naked. Get Revelation 16 and 15. You should already know how he covered the naked. Because that should already, if you hear him covering the naked, what did it take you back to? Adam and Eve, right? He said, Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watch and keep his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. His atonement allowed what to happen? It allowed, it allowed for number one, your sin to be covered. It allowed the Ruach HaKodesh to be sent. Which Ecclesiastes references always let your garment be white. See, get your epistle of Jude. The last epistle letter before the book of Revelation. Verse 23. Or make it 20. He said, but ye beloved, building yourselves on your most Kodesh faith, praying in the Ruach HaKodesh. Keep yourselves in the love of Elohim, looking for the mercy of our master, Yahushua HaMashiach, unto eternal life. And some have compassion, making a difference. And others say with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. You know what I'm talking about? Because we want to keep that garment white. Because he said he's seen those that were naked and he gave them a cover. He's seen we had no covering for our sins. Without him, we die. So he said, my, he said, I seen the naked, I gave him a cover. Remember what he told you? He said, it's expedient for you that I go away. If I go not away, the comforter can't come. So we sit back and look at it. He said, this is a fast which he have chosen. Hamashiach dealt his bread to the hungry. He let the oppressed go free. He broke the yoke, because if you yoke, that means you're under bondage. You know what I'm talking about? What else did it say? It said, uh, he got rid of your burdens. He seen the he brought the poor back into his house. And when he seen you naked, he covered you. You know what I'm talking about? He covered you. All this showing you how he is our atonement. Because this is what he said. This is what the words say the day of atonement is about, right? So he had to come around and do all of that. He had to do all of that. Matthew 5:17. He say, think not that I am come to destroy the law of the prophets. I come not to destroy, but to fulfill. For truly I say unto you, till Shamahim and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of the least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of Shamahim. But whosoever shall do and teach them the same shall be called great in the kingdom of Shamahim. For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of Shamayim. Praise ye, y'all, for Yahushua Mashiach in the world. Y'all understood all the stuff you see? Yes, sir. Praise Shammai.